Right, so where we left off is the PCs uh, got back to Althea Montrose's apartment uh, sometime after the uh, wax emporium had uh, burnt, but it was put out by uh, a bust water main. That's what the PCs are right now. It's probably about 2, 3 p.m. right now. There's still light outside. We need to go back to the museum and talk to the stuffers. So, Alright, let's do it. And we can break ties with this island. We can never break ties with this island. Scotland's still attached to it. <laughs> so I guess we're going to hail a taxi and go to the museum and see if we can talk to the two taxidermists and sit there around. Alright. Um, you do have the two names. Where are we here? Uh, Alyssa Porchu and Simon List. Uh, supposedly, Alyssa Porchu is a Euro Asian historian, uh, while Simon List is the art and antiquities restorer. Um, currently, they are both available. Talk to them. Separate rooms. Okay, one way, have somebody watching them. We'll ask, talk to the guy first. Who restored the safety tiger? Uh, Simon List, and we'll show you guys a picture. Uh, he's currently working in the basement, but you can get information about where he is and ultimately knock on the door. Okay. Nice. Not guilty. He's wearing white gloves. Uh, he has the kind of creepy old guy. Like, to him. <laughs> Is the refined like I might need a double life? Uh, it seems as though it takes a moment for him to realize that somebody's knocking at the door. Ultimately, the individual I described, er, I describe, I showed you a picture of, answers the door. Uh, can I help you? Uh, we were wondering if you worked on the saber tooth tiger exhibit that was uh, temporarily stored in the. Uh, uh, the Oh, oh, yes, um, I had constructed that um, probably about, you would say, two months ago, about the time frame. Uh, he didn't know anything about the, um, the murder that happened. He had been, uh, he talked to one in the yard. Uh, is this a follow-up investigation? Yes. We work, uh... We're freelance investigators. We're for the Dura Group. We've been hired by related parties to... Find out more of what's going on. Okay. Um, Are we in his office? He'll give right you now? some. You're not sure if it's his office. It looks more like um, just a, a workroom to do some restoration in. I kind of carouse it, just sort of like that. Um, it looks like it could be a temporary office, but it doesn't look like anyone's permanent office. That's fine. It's uh, not too large, but you can see that there's a lot of lights pointing down on the desk. Anything breakable. You would say so. Uh, say so. There are a few old um, spearheads. Uh, you can give me an anthropology. Must have by one. You're not sure. Um, possibly Greek, um, Turkish, could even be Roman. Turkish smash! <laughs> <laughs> What's the magic word? Turk. Um, otherwise, he does provide you some valuable information about uh, the era that the beast lived in, uh, a lot of demographics, um, things about his uh, eating habits, mating habits. Did anybody else work on the exhibit after you? Um, he says that uh, some of the background had been done by Alyssa Porchu, uh, but he primarily stuffed it and, uh, what the hell is it, uh, assembled the skin for it. No, he says that she helped him design what they wanted for, and he ultimately built it. Could have been drawn by anybody. Can I show a picture of but her name's popped up twice on the old. Yep. Yeah, no. But they work in Paris. He, he doesn't recognize the symbols that are on there. Um, he says those weren't on there when he finished. Uh, I'll roll that. Oh. Uh, See, it's better when he doesn't bring Psychology. He's psychology. 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 Um, for the most part, he seems uh, pretty mild-mannered. Um, he seems to be 
honest from what you can tell. Um, all my magic using friends seem to have a higher resonance with my goggles. I'll look at him with my goggles on. Um, I showed him the pictures of the symbols that were on there because he said that he designed yours, but he said those weren't his design. He didn't put those on. There. Uh, right now, um, what is it? You'd see that. We'll see that Frock, uh, Barton, Rice, and uh, what have you. Rice and uh, Hunter. Hunter have uh, slightly higher than your normal person. Um, you're, you two are actually uh, no, they're adequately noticeable different, but in a large population like 100, 200 people, they kind of blend in. Uh, you two individuals are not too far below them. I see this guy. And you would also notice that both of the cats are higher than anyone else. Okay. I know what I'm talking to. The um, might be slightly higher than average, but uh, not more than you. Okay. Ask them. Have you had uh, many interactions with things that are more than mundane? Well, he says that uh, he deals with ancient antiquities, some that are priceless all the time. Um, he tries to restore items that uh, people haven't ever seen before. Um, what supernatural things, I say? I, I deal with a lot of occult objects. Um, he says uh, things like ancient cultures, um, he lists off a variety of different, um, um, what have you, a variety of different cults, cult, um, supernatural philosophies, uh, belief systems, mysticism. You guys can give me occult roles. I scan with my monocle around the room. Okay. Nothing terribly unusual. I mean, you guys are probably the most unusual thing here. One. By thirteen. By thirteen. Do you have a call? No. I'm sure it does. Occasionally it's handy. No. For the most part, you guys, you guys um, think that he has a lot of, I suppose, fairly accurate, useful information. Um, he does seem to be lacking in his occult knowledge, from what you can tell. Um, he seems... I, unless he's leading you on, which you're not confident of, it doesn't seem like he actually has as much of a uh, practical knowledge of the occult as you would. But does it seem like a lot of people have the Who's guarding the other lady? I'll roll that for you. Trade. Gotcha. <laughs> Um, so far, even though you're working with him, um, Adair Merriweather, I suppose, would be high up on the suspects list because he seems to know most about the occult. But there's a lot of people that work at the British Museum. Mind you, these are historians and uh, anthropologists. There's probably a lot of people here that know about the occult. I mean, before you guys have dropped key information and checked for any kind of change in their body language, but... Where's, uh, your... Where's the other office at? Uh, what's her name? Oh, he tells you that he has a small office on the second floor. He can tell you the number. What about the, the lady? For the gal. Oh, uh, he tells you that she's probably working in the, um... Uh, what the hell is it? The drawing room, off the back. Of this area? Um, he would say a floor above this uh, main floor. What do you know about her person? You're not sure. You don't think that he's lying, but it's hard to tell specifically. Um, you feel as though he might be not lying, but it's not a strong. It's not a strong. Thing. What do you know about her person? Does she have a family? Um, he vaguely remembers that she has a brother in Madison, but he's not sure if he's accidentally mixing that up with... with Emma Davies. Where is she from? He doesn't know too much specifically. 
Does she have a hobby? I know, but it's Outside of. Well, she well, she's fairly quiet. Um, uh, he says that. Um, <coughs> he says she, she keeps to herself, but he keeps to himself as well, so he doesn't know a uh, whole lot about her. He can tell her you uh, basic things like when she um, started working here, probably about uh, five years ago. Um, she seems to be a Euro Asian historian. She's going to be pretty good. Um, she works sometimes with him in restoring um, uh, certain artifacts, and she seems to be fairly adept um, with uh, some of the chemical compounds. Like she had helped him assemble some of the glue for the um, the hide of the not the taxidermy creature, but the the stuffed animal that they made. How many vacation and sick days do you guys get as part of your employment? He would say fairly high. I mean, equivalent to like a government post. Hey guys, okay. you're gonna um, draft how many does she use during a given during her tenure five years? She works on a lot of her own projects and not necessarily on site. Um, so he can't tell specifically, but she's not always working here. So she he imagines that she only works here about thirty hours out of the week. And then no, the, uh, no. the surrounding area. Or or? Um, he's not sure what else she does. Thank you. Is she new? Was it last year? No, he said five years ago. Five years, sorry. All right, tournament players, round one is scrolling on the screen. Tournament players, round one is up. I thank him for his time. Ask him if he's planning to be here the rest of the day. Yeah, uh, he usually gets in late, but stays late. <laughs> um, he says that they um, mostly coordinate with... Um, she coordinates with um, Darren Merriweather, so he doesn't know her hours specifically. He's talked to her. She seems to be okay. She's very uh, driven. He says that she's fairly intelligent. Um, uh, he says in his probably last 25, 30 years of working, um, he's worked on quite a few. He's worked on with her quite a bit over the last uh, five years, but usually on small projects and only for a small amount of time. Um, some museums have like you know those um, like Neanderthal guys and it's all like that. Yeah. Yeah. Where is your wax works here? He says that we don't have a specific wax work. Some of the exhibits do have wax representations or things of that nature. Even small objects that are sometimes made out of wax because they don't have what it would look like. And that's a lot of what he does. He restores items and then it sets up some of the exhibits. Um, he consults with the historians on the accuracy specifically. Um, yeah. Sounds like a boring old dude who might be lying. Welcome to the British Museum. <laughs> <laughs> we thank him first time. I think we're ready to move on, right? You'll find her in the floor above, the drying room. He says there's another one of the curators, Jeffrey Davies' wife. Otherwise, uh, knocking on the door. Uh, no, I'll probably see the doors open. Uh, you can see Alyssa is working with certain chemicals. Yeah. Can I tell what they are before we approach? She has acid in her face and go blind. She has a. I would say it's though as she's trying to dry. Um, what is it? Remove water using various chemical compounds out of certain parchments and other things that she's currently working with. Um, it looks like she's working with um, some old kind of um, papyrus papers, possibly from. It's hard to tell without getting too close. Potentially, any of those chemicals could be thrown in your eyes, it could make you blind. I'll put on my monocle when we walk in. Goggles. Might as well get a jump on this one. I'll stand back. I step up right away. <laughs> I just want to see if she's natural. Nobody's blind, blind, blind. Um, She has well, about this. With the monocle and your um, goggles, she seems to have about the same color as you two, but not as much as them. Oh, yeah. But he's also Why am I included in that? I'm not so magical. magical. Just like because does. what that looks at doesn't necessarily mean magical power. That's why I'm thinking back to work. 
snowballs. However, sometimes those are correlated. He's good, but he's slow. Why would he do that over here? Do you know who Davies is? That guy that knew about Dark Fairies and stuff and was always dropping? Yeah, only Davies. But we already know Davies, so we can't technically speak about it. She seems to look over at you. Does anyone, uh, I'll step up and say, uh, are you Emma, whatever? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, Alyssa Portu? Yeah. Are you Alyssa Portu? She says, yeah. Um, did you do some work on the Sabertooth Tiber? She says uh, she primarily develops some of the glues that were used in it. She doesn't know anything about the murder specifically. Uh, uh, you only want to use him when you go up against Sports Man. We already know he owns Sports Man. But when you're not facing Sports Man, why do you use Hydra over, like, Rogue? I joined the college again. My psychology is 14. Um, I'll tell you more information as she continues yeah. to talk. Uh, she says, yeah, that she developed some of the glue um, and uh, the synthetic hair that they ended up using. Um, they might have used real hair in actuality. Say some of the glue horse and hair. Yeah, horse hair, something like that. Did you uh put the symbols on it too? The occult symbols? I'll show her photo. Well, it's tech lies. I'm watching your body language. I'm always doing those things. Just, just, just like I'm sensing steelies at this moment, too. <laughs> I'm going to walk out in the hall. Erickson's not here, so let's grab that. Well, right. Uh, also, it was it's, uh, she says that, no, she didn't have anything to do with any kind of weird symbols. She doesn't know how he died. Um, he usually took late nights, and it seems like he had been obsessed with work over the last few weeks, um, or the, the prior weeks in which he disappeared. Um, she says it is weird that there was somebody fast-tracked into a position, but I suppose they're kind of gearing up for summer, and there's certain exhibits that need to be finished up, uh, and he had a large breadth of knowledge, so they just kind of relied on him for a lot of the things that were going to be assembled, so um, she understands why. Um, overall, your psychology, she seems to be a, a bit overtly defensive. Uh, she doesn't, I suppose, seem to be dishonest about the, um, the occult writings, uh, but she definitely is agitated uh, about the questioning. Uh, yeah, detect I lies. <coughs> could be. Overly defensive. Um, detect lies and um, your body languages. Um, you guys would say that. I suppose she's being careful with her words a little bit, and she does seem to, um, I suppose, not have a keen predisposition towards the group, whether it's because of your savoir faire, your previous exploits, or who knows what else. Uh, B, I suppose, it seems as though she's very wary of you, but she's not necessarily, um, I suppose, worried about you. It seems like something else might be bothering her. Well, I'll bring it up. I'll say something else seems to be bothering you. What, what else have you got going she, on? She pauses time? for a moment. She tells you, well, I have various exhibits um, that are happening right now. Uh, I've got a lot of things on my plate, and I suppose these uh, interview or these interrogations aren't really helping. Um, you guys have your information. B, you'd feel that, um, I suppose, that's not quite really what she's um, worried about. Is there somebody that... Uh saw around the exhibit or expressing interest in the exhibit after you had assembled it? She says that all the curators had access to it at some point in time. Uh, there's a lot of backup keys. The offices aren't secure in the fact that um, somebody couldn't get into them. A lot of times somebody might not be here or we might need to gain access to paperwork or something else in somebody's office right away. So there's a lot of backup keys. And, uh, the janitor has some. So anyone could theoretically have gotten in there and drawn the symbols. She doesn't know what that has to do with it being, uh, what is it, uh, him being stuffed inside the body. Or the... Do you have concern about your safety? She does seem to pause a little bit. She says, no, I, I'm fine here. It's just, I hope everything just blows over. Is there an individual that has caused you concern? Again, I'll offer a dick section. You can give me a diplomacy. B, why aren't you doing Because she's not the one you talking. You said the words, my friend. Exactly, but why aren't you picking it up? Well, I'm out in the hallway. The I'm kind of scan we'll with you. you. The monocle. Okay. I'll try to step in. I'll be like, the Abjura group will protect you. All right. He's already talked, though. So I mean, uh, we're going to ride it. We're going to ride my 9 to victory. 
You can help but I don't after this, though. I failed by one. Failed by yeah. one? We're, we're riding my nine to victory. She doesn't seem to be very confident. He's like, no, 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 we'll protect you. Nine. We will throw I rolled a ten. I'll, I'll try. I made it on the nose because I got a plus one for the dice. Thank you very much, Professor. You get a little bit of feeling she drops a little bit of regard, but she's not taking the deal thus far. She's close, but it's not sealing the deal. You can say whatever you want. It becomes a fast talk at a certain point. We, we came into this situation. We've already protected one young lady that had been assaulted by a, a group. No. And we're seeing to it that her health is brought back to where it was. So you can trust us. We're here to Don't touch me for at least two to three weeks. I don't mention that. I try to step in the diplomacy shoes. Give me the diplomacy. The words of wisdom. Oh, well. It's going to last the lead. Brogy does have less than The only thing we can tell is that when you're starting me. She'll ultimately kind of wrap up and close the chemical bottle she's dealing with right now. Uh, she will go behind you, shut the door, lock it. You're still in a large, uh, what the hell is it, um, what chemical lab? But uh, I suppose it's more private now. It definitely seems like there's no other entrances into the place. Um, she tells you that she's been a little bit worried, and she mostly looks at you. She doesn't seem to have a whole lot of confidence in the rest of the group at the moment. Uh, she says she's heard some strange things happening around. She does know that um, Adam Merriweather and, um, uh, what is his name, uh, Dr. Carl Mint, uh, definitely seem to be concerned uh, about something happening probably about two, three months back. Um, Althea Montrose, the young intern, that had, not the intern, but the young woman that had been working here, um, also seemed to get wrapped up in things, and she feels as though a lot of things are happening behind her back, and she, well, she'll whisper to you, well, in a hushed tone, she'll tell you, that she could have sworn that she's even seen things like some of the exhibits moving, and large groups of, um, what would you say, like, maybe 15, 20 people, she thought initially was maybe another group, um, or some of the curators, um, talking about something, then heading off, and just kind of, there's a lot of backroom dealings that she's been somewhat aware of, uh, and I suppose given the, that they found the body of Dr. Mint, um, and it looks like they were, Dr. Mint was possibly trying to find out something about this, she feels a little bit that she might know, even though she doesn't know a lot, she feels as though she might know enough to warrant somebody's interest. She doesn't know anything. Every day, or just once it's happened? She says every once in a while, um, it had geared up sometime around the time where Dr. Mint had disappeared. It's been fairly quiet since then. Um, but she's heard occasionally late nights here, um, screams in the parking lot. And, um, the guards would go check on it and nothing happened from what they can tell. Maybe it's just some, she says we're in the middle of London, so I mean there's noises at night. What exhibits have uh, She says that she could have sworn at one point in time that she saw some of the Romans exhibits uh, moving. The what? Roman. Uh, she says that there's a um, pretty extensive exhibit dealing with the um, uh, Alexandria and uh, Roman legionnaires. We should go check that out. Do you have any vacations? Time straight up? Um, she does. I mean, she doesn't know if she could actually leave due to the, I, I suppose, just losing Dr. Mint was pretty significant, I mean, in its own way, but especially to the, uh, she wouldn't say especially, but in a small way to um, getting these exhibits up and running. Um, she doesn't know why Adam Merriweather is deciding to keep on going with things. Maybe he decided that he can't really close down a giant museum like this, but she's worried. Um, we could try to put you in a protective custody. You look a little sick. She's just worried. She's one of the few people that works here late at night, and everyone else knows it. Uh, and she feels as though she might be privy to certain things. Uh, she's fine if you ask her questions. She might not know the necessarily the, the significance of anything. What era does the Roman exhibit deal with? Uh, she says around the same time that Alexandria burnt down. Does that coincide with Adrian's wall? And the timeline that we learned about from the script itself, they were butchering the druids. And all that kind of when stuff. the Celts were attacked? Um, 
I would say not specifically. I mean, relatively, probably. Um, but uh, yeah. What um, people in the museum, what curators have been whispering secret things and moving along? She can tell you that Adam Merriweather and Carl Mint were two, was a group by themselves doing something. They had some talks and um, seemed to be concerned with some of the um, individuals. She said that they would most likely, those two were somewhat connected with the um, captain of the guard. Uh, but she's seen other people moving about. However, she, she has a hard time telling who it is specifically. Is this more at the evening hours than you saw? <laughs> Usually in the evening hours. Are they in the shadows? Are they wearing robes? She says she's seen some of the interns packing up and moving equipment that they shouldn't be. Um, however, when approached, they seem to not know what um, she's talking about. We're just told that they were going to move this from other areas. But she's pretty confident that they put on that show when she's there. Um, she she doesn't have the manifest. Um, that was somewhat of what uh, Simon List and uh, Christopher O'Donnell were doing. I think we've got everything we need here. I don't think we should go looking at these exhibits. Just yet. Okay, so shouldn't look at the exhibits because there's people in the museum. Well, if we're gonna have further discussion, we should excuse ourselves. All right, excuse ourselves. We thank her for information. So we should we could have a follow up conversation with Meriwether. And the other thing that maybe bears investigation is they've got private security guards here. And apparently, there's people. By the time that you guys was. start to leave. Um, Alyssa will tell you that given that you guys have been in here and uh, I suppose news travels fast if you're planning on doing some sort of protective thing she will be more confident if you do it tonight uh, given that she spent enough probably about 30-40 minutes talking to you in her lab Can you hold on to this button for me? She can okay. Basically I hand her one of the meteorite stones I have that have a steely signal carved in it I'll tell her to put it in a pocket Okay so please don't lose it. It'll help me find you. All right. She kind of looks at you. Yeah. Walk through them. Walk through one of the exhibits. Back before nightfall. So I do confirm with my sense Steely that I can pick it up when I walk away. That she's got something else. Or something, but I assume I can. Yeah. Presumably, yeah. Well, with my sense Steely just going on, don't I? That would be the. That would be within the size of kind of the. Um, a good chunk of the British Museum, but if you go to like Althea Montrose's, you would actually have to extend that. Okay, but I mean, when I hand it to her, I pick it up so I can tell she's not yep. cloaked or anything. Mind you, it's kind of like a GPS device, you only know where the device is. Yep. Not where she is necessarily. What's she saying? Yeah. If she has it on her person. The only thing he can sense, like with spatial sense, you can't even tell someone's there. You right. just know that yeah. that yeah. object is there. Yep. Yeah. No, I get it. That's, that's why I that. We could leave Frank with her and. Thomas. When we go back out, I use the monocle to scan some of the exhibits and just take note which ones have a higher. Okay. We go back to the first guy and ask him what's up with the late night visitations. Could leave our own arrangements. Um, you'd probably come across what look to be, depending on how long these guys take. Um, as I had mentioned earlier in this adventure, there's probably close to about. A five percent rate at which some of these objects are just more than mundane. They're just kind of sitting here. Um, they vary. Nothing, I suppose, overtly. Uh, um, nothing overtly powerful. Are you trying to go through all the exhibits? No, just whatever's on this. No. On the way. On the way. Well, before we leave, are you going to be in this place? I mean, what's her time frame? She's going to be here. She got in at two. She's going to be out at ten. Okay. Is there a cult room in this space? Um. She says no. There's a back chemical room, and she can lock the door for right now. But she seems to stress that. I mean, if something's going to happen, she does need your protection. That's why she talked to you, not to give her some sort of butt here. And I'm asking these questions like better protect. So, is there some place where there's a rug or floor mat? It's roughly six by six. Um. She would say that there's many exhibits that have a floor rug. Oh, okay. rug and, and there's a large space in the back. She can move some of the um, tables around. I could leave one of our That's what I was going to do. Let's just stay here and see what happens today. Well, they have to know that we left. Yeah, we've got other leaves. We can leave, teleport back in. 
So I leave, I leave one of my signals, the canvas ones I fold it out, and then, you know, if she's got a rug or something, I can throw over the top of it, I do try to cover it, um, and I'll ask her for something that can be used to cover it, you know, even a drop cloth, yeah, she'll give you a drop cloth, anything, um, and then you've got, you've got a couple of those wrist bracelets floating around, do you know Morris Code by any chance? She does. Do you leave her one of your devices, perhaps? I leave her all my devices. So, if something should happen, just kind of show her out, you know, demonstrate you what you need yeah. and see it works on her wrist. That's what we'll be able to communicate with. Okay. We so need to go to more school place. We need to go to the chantry. So, please don't put anything else other than the drop off on this piece of canvas. Just make a big show of leaving and immediately send some of us back. And I, mind you, if you're taking a, uh, a show of leaving, are you leaving Frank and Thomas here then? No. Are you sure? Yeah. We all have to leave together. We don't, though. We could leave them here. But we can teleport them back after in. After we teleport in, they could walk away, too. Okay. Why, not, why not just everybody walk away? Think something's really going to happen in the next five minutes. Yeah. Probably not. Who knows? Mm -hmm. oh. All right, let's all leave. Then we're close enough. We'll teleport back in. We're the We'll make a big show of all us leaving, then. Let's go to the... I would like to go to the Chantry. See if uh, Althea Mon or yeah, Althea Montrose is awake. Because then she can tell us who put that shit down her throat. Do we have a rough estimate of when she was supposed to revive? Or? Uh, who? The Althea, Althea Montrose. Uh, they said essentially about 48 hours since it originally happened. Um, it's been about almost 48 hours. Almost 48 hours. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we should even say you for Mind hours. you, Althea Montrose could be woken up. They were keeping in her in a kind of a mystical sleep just to make sure that it didn't spread while it was being detoxed. We can teleport those two back in. Frank and Thomas. Yeah, but can we just leave them there? Because she might have to do a fright check if all of a sudden they're there. Well, it's in another back room. We'll just walk out of it wouldn't be in a back room. It's inside the chemical lab. That's the largest space she has available. The back chemical storage rooms are pretty packed. Tell her ahead of time. Like, we're going to leave. Two guys might come back in through that room right there. But what if... Yeah, we better recess our specific though. Because it's like, she's waiting for two guys and it's killers. There is enough room. It would be difficult to separate her from the area that somebody might teleport into. Uh, just because... she's standing on No, it's probably about... 25 feet behind her, but it's essentially a large room with various, uh, what is it, uh, podium, or what the hell is it, center aisle tables that are built into the floor with sinks and drainage and yada, yada, yada. Before I leave, I'll put up an elder sign. So you're just saying as far as the little sigil I left her with, separating that between the larger sigil is difficult? No, you were asking for an area which you could lay down a six foot diameter. Okay. And that would be in the large room. There's not a good way of putting it in a separate area. Gotcha. So she'd see whoever. Potentially. She could be easily looking the opposite direction when you came in and just notice. Later on, there's two people in the inside the room. If you're concerned about it, then we should send her more skull and the other thing. Tell her to go back to the back storage room. We're going to send two of our team here. Uh, to infiltrate, infiltrate stealthily. Uh, tell us when you're there. Tell us when somebody teleports into the circle. She doesn't have to leave. leave. We're all gonna leave. Make a picture of leaving. Do we want? Do we want, do you want a couple older back. signs around the area? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I'd work. rather have people walk through so I can get them off. So. <laughs> well, sometimes elder signs can keep them out. How easy would it be for me to disguise myself as her? Ah. Uh, you have a lot more classical features than she does. Um, a lot. What's your disguise? 13. I don't think we need to get fixated on her being attacked. A little bit. She, she hinted and alluded that that's a possibility. You think that from behind, yeah, you could make yourself look up. You're similar enough build. If you got the right clothing. But definitely there would be some changes in the nose and the cheekbones. Enough where somebody looking at you would be like, what the fuck? All right. So, the thought, I passed it by. I mean, again, we gave her the thing, told her that maybe it comes up, do something. You know, so, if your thing starts triggering, yeah. you know, a second later, we're all in the room. Okay. Let her know. Call for help immediately. We'll be there in moments. Okay. And we leave. All right. 
You make, I suppose you make a round around some of the exhibits and then you head out. The vast majority of people probably have seen you. So we want to try to talk to Arthur or whatever Davies? Or uh, Merriweather? Merriweather? Just because apparently he knew something. We talked about it before. It's like, yeah, I know lots of things, but I'm not going to tell you in specific. So we can lean on them. Yeah, let's go lean on them. Let's say, hey, we know that there's been groups of people coming in late at night. And the other thing is, if we look at the level of scrutiny we underwent when we came up at late at night, there's either a leak on their security team to allow all these people that are unaccounted for, or they're accounted for, and it should be in the records. Okay, who's putting that there? Uh, and why didn't you know about any of the exhibits moving in the stars? He already knows what kind of a cult crap's going down. Yeah. Well, he might not know that. But... Right, let's go talk to him. All right. He's still within the museum. You can't talk to him. Uh, he'll let you into his office. He'll close the door behind you. Um, the doors are fairly thick, but I mean, there's enough of a gap underneath the door for allowing like certain things, like maybe a rub to fit. Um, so you would say that somebody interior or just on the other side of the door could hear you. It's not the ask Frock to stand outside the door. Timothy. Okay. Uh, I'll ask him. Do you know about these large groups of strangers that have been seen around the museum late at night on occasion? For the most part, he is aware that there has been, as you said before, that there's strange activities happening around here. He's pretty sure that they are cults. Um, the problem is whoever's orchestrating the entire thing seems to be very, um, very able to hide himself mystically and uh, through social means. He can't determine who it is specifically, um, and he's worried that if he just closes down the museum, that the uh, whatever they're planning on doing is going to happen regardless. Well, we destroyed their bodies, so what they're going to do probably isn't going to happen. So he asks you about the bodies. You found bodies? Yeah, there was a curio shop, and they were hiding bodies of homeless people inside a wax block. They burnt to the ground. They destroyed them. And we found it. Tell him um, about the number of bodies. It was like 25. Was 35, he said, did you have any evidence about who might have been connected to this? or? Well, actually, that's the one thing. is We did recover a ledger plus a book inside the safe. And we haven't bothered to look at either of those. I, I have photos of the uh, He says, did you question the people that work at the Emporium? It was empty. There was two. It was a month renovation. So three, did you check public records? Yeah, there's three golems that... He says, well, if they're hiding bodies, I mean, who's in the public records for owning the building? Who operates there? Surely some people in the nearby town, or not the nearby town, but the, the, the not even City Hall, but maybe local business owners or the other cinemas in the area might know who works there, right? He says that emporium's been open for years. And, and in theory, you should know everybody that's here at night, but yet you don't. So I'm sure we'll find similar things. He's aware of everyone. Um... The problem is, is he's having a hard time subtly tracking the movements of a hundred people and not tipping them off about what's happening and not getting himself into a compromising position where he's going to essentially be... We're investigating all the leads, I assure him. He imagines whoever's leading this up is probably a more accomplished uh, sorcerer than him. So he can't really look into this by himself late at night usually leaves and retreats to a safe place, but otherwise has been keeping his eyes and ears open. I dig in my bag and pop out the book to see what it says. Uh, Sierra, which one? Whatever the book was inside the safe. Ah, the one in the safe. Uh, so these seem to be, you can give me a research, everyone give me a research as you look over, it's going to take some time, though, probably about an hour or two. We're all just kind of looking over this one book. It seems to be a book and scrap notes inside. So Michael people can take some of the notes out, look at them, reference other books. So somebody can be reading out a particular passage in another language. Another person can be reading the translation and uh, some sort of book. Translation book. Four. Five. All together with well, all together with you and uh, Meriwether, it seems like this is a modernization of the ritual that is depicted in the Sierra Altaria. It seems as though they've made modifications regarding uh, the practices and what's acceptable uh, mystically for the bodies and the preparation. 
Uh, it differs significantly in the fact it looks like the bodies are preserved in wax. Um, they're a lot older than they should be in the ritual, but due to modern chemicals like formaldehyde and um, what the hell have you, and then being able to seal the bodies in a relatively oxygenless environment, it looks like they've been able to extend, extend how long they can be dead and in what condition. Um, ultimately, they treated different types of formaldehyde slightly, so it, um, its resonant didn't affect the body significantly. Um, it seems as though they were able to manipulate the wax in a way to preserve the life force within. Uh, that might be one of the reasons that Frock was able to pick up trace amounts of life force when he cracked the seal, but they have been dead for a very long time. Um, it seems as though there is notes. Anyone have strategy land? What? Strangey land. Uh, tactics. 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 Did it by six. Exact. From what I can tell in the notes, it seems as though everything had been set up so someone could simply take a few large vehicles, like uh, just transport vehicles, roll up into Stonehenge, unpack, and get everything into essentially proper working order within an hour. And after that, it only takes probably about 15 to 20 minutes. Like the museum, because no anyone asking. It could have been some sort of, it looks like it could have been some sort of like anthropological dig in the area. And they say it's British Museum business. Uh, the British Museum has all the equipment. Uh, some of the strange things, however, seem to be that, um, well, this isn't strange. It seems that 17 people are needed for the ritual specifically, but it accounts for probably about another eight people that are working the kind of surrounding areas, creating roadblocks um, and other vehicles. There's also what seems to be a depiction of a fairly well done perimeter defense, probably close to about 44 individuals with spears, you would say. Um, <laughs> These surrounds, they're just depicted as, uh, what is it, what you would say are, um, not stick figure, you would say, um, like, foot soldiers, infantry soldiers, uh, except, like, depending, some of the ranges they're listing are probably, like, five, ten feet for individuals coming in, and probably about six to seven large, I would, uh, the depiction's almost seem as though they're maneuvering war elephants into a particular area, but... So how many... So 44 and 6 is... How many Hannibal troops do they have at the museum? Exactly. How many elephants do you have here? How many legionnaires do you have here? He says they have, I mean... Mannequins. He says that they have a woolly mammoth skeleton structure here. They don't actually have any full elephants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he says that they do have a full legion of uh, Roman soldiers, but most of those are in storage. So a um, Centurion, maybe? I, I don't know how much a legion would be. I would probably say there's close to about 88 okay. in there. So how much of there? Are <laughs> yeah. He says that 23 of them are currently in the exhibit, but the rest of them have different poses and things of that nature, and depending on what they're doing, uh, they might switch them out. Can we go disassemble them? He says they're wax pieces. What and company did you guys go through to get them? Like both of them. He says the Emporium provided a lot of the wax materials uh, and uh, basic frameworks from there uh, are various historians. He says even including himself. Um, he would say Emma Davies, uh, Alyssa Portu. Ain't they well in the daytime? Well, Meriwether, Portu, and Davies. Well, the individuals that worked on the, um, the uh, soldiers were Emma Davies, Alyssa Portu, Carl Mint, uh, um, uh, Michael Harold, Richard Evans, and Simon List. So the usual suspects. I got Emma Davies, Elizabeth Fortune, Carl Mint, Simon List. Harold. Simon List, uh, Malcolm Harold, uh, Richard Evans. 
So what was the last thing you and Mint were working on? He obviously was killed because he was getting close to something. You guys had your heads together. Uh, Mint was a more accomplished sorcerer than he was. Um, Mint believed that he had found some way of tracking the individual, um, but that's the last he heard of it. So He's going to talk to him in the morning. Do you have on account of interns wandering around late at night? You've got reports of unidentified people. He says that depending on the project, there can be people outside the British Museum that are working on exhibits. So at any point in time, depending on the sign-in sheet, there could be close to about 20 to 30 people here after hours. Okay, so you've got 200 people that are employed here, right? Of that 200, how many of them actually come here late at night to the jobs? Since they've been gearing up for the summer, virtually all of the head curators uh, virtually all the main curators have been here, and if you can give you a list of probably about 22 of the interns. What about, what about the owner of the Waxworks? He doesn't know who the owner of the Waxworks is. His name is on any of the papers that you guys signed off to procure the Waxworks? Um, the individual that he has dealt with we should start interviewing the interns and find a call is a Michael Rono. Uh, but the paperwork. However, the, the photographic memory, the owner of the uh, the owner of the uh, what happened, the Emporium, was Gregory Winston. He's vaguely familiar with the name now that he's heard it again. Um, he's not the guy that they buy uh, from directly, but he, he probably has some dealing with him um, prior to about a year or two ago. Um, Do you remember what the guy looks like? He does. He says uh, an older individual, probably um, getting close to 70s right now. So ring a bell. Any other distinguishing features? His nose, his eyebrows, hair color. I still think we should go with the chanter. Uh, uh, facial hair. Just trying to see if it rings a bell for any of us. He'll give you a description of what he looks like. Um, nothing specifically. So of these 22 people, he gives us their home addresses and names, right? He'll give you the home addresses and names. Okay. Of the, of the people on this list, are there any, who are the top five that you're most concerned about? The top ten. He says that he's worked with most of these people for years. So it's very hard for him to determine because if there has been a breach of trust somewhere, he might have known the culprits for the last 5, 10, 15 years and just completely not known. He doesn't understand how someone could seamlessly just penetrate into the... So figuratively, if I were to hold a gun to your head, you have a name... He doesn't like your metaphor, um, but he says that uh, he didn't think too much about it at the time, but Christopher O'Donnell had been... Pushed in pretty quickly. Um, he knows Alyssa Pork Chu, and she does seem suspicious, but he's known her for a fairly long period of time. Um, he does say that he has heard strange things happening at night, and there's various guards. He would imagine there has to be someone in the guards that has to know something that's going on. Because he never gets really reports. So can he, give us he doesn't think he can give you. Um, he doesn't think it's Captain Darius Avery, but he doesn't know. Like he has said before, if it is one of the individuals here, he's been working with them for years. That's the other approach to go is try to find security. Yeah. How many uh, security guards you got? Um, he says during the day, uh, close to about 15, but he's mostly concerned with the, the night shift, which he'll say six people. Uh, and, we, and we've got it in with the captain. So who could um, sign off on like, streets being um, shut down in security? Would that be the mayor's office? <laughs> As in... Which one? Yeah, he, you know, protecting? That, uh, yeah. For two. What is that thing you guys were talking about where they wanted like, um, some of the wax? Like, I want you check in with Spear, 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 Spear. I can go down there and check on it. Does she know Morse code? Yeah, she Say, B, why don't you check in with Miss Perchu to see if she's still okay? Yeah. Step out of the room and use the telegraph ring. Are you still okay, man? Uh, second. Yeah, that's right. Some of them were the got turned to the um, after a while, uh, probably say close to about a minute, there is a response. Um, 
She seems to be not terribly adept at it. Um, and there are big pauses in between when she says things. She says she's okay. She says that she's fine. Um, she does, it does take her close to about two minutes between each response. The killer also It sounded like her. could be her idol. Otherwise, what was your question prior? She gave her a password. Shut up. Shut up. What up? Yeah, that, uh, All things will do for the next like, what the, the body and they needed like um, engineers. Did you say they needed um, like security and the roads to be blocked up for Oh, this is what you guys found in the materials researching with him. And no, for the most part there's no security that's needed. The beauty of this operation it seems like everything uh, uses British Museum equipment, everything's streamlined. If somebody's looking, it's the British Museum is unloading what looks to be historical. Uh, Who requisitions all that? Who signs off on it? He says various people do. Um, a lot of the curators have their own depict de particular exhibits. Um, he will tell you that... So they wouldn't need any assistance That Richard Evans would be in charge of the... Uh, uh, what the hell is it? The uh, Roman exhibit? So he would most likely check out on that. But the other exhibits, um, depends on who. He can just tell you who's working on which particular exhibits. But he says that security hasn't ever been uh, a point prior to this where they needed to keep separate keys. If somebody goes in the back, all the same stuff is stored there. So he says there's probably about 22 keys in total that are out there circulating that could get into the various places in the British Museum. All this stuff could easily be forged to frame someone else, just like they're framing the museum. So, um, I think we go to the security guard and find our Alright, I'll do whatever. Uh, the night crew isn't in, but the guards for the night crew are Captain Darius Avery. Uh, is it? So six names, uh, five names. What about interviewing our own uh, Black Shorts? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So I mean, if you're gonna go to all this trouble, all this stuff, you, why would you uh, sign the lease with your real name? Otherwise, after uh, catching the there's if the officer. You ever see going to know what they look like? Okay, where's your picture lineup? You're start handing them. Not asking for a picture lineup. They say, well, it was a middle-aged guy. He had short hair. He looked like a guard at a museum kind of guy. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Or they the captain's the name is head of the Avery. Look like the captain's name is Avery. I suppose we could get like Avery. There's Officer him. Knight, Officer Kind, Officer Pierce, Officer Duergard, and Officer Clyde. Remember, Ian understands that you like to metagame, so he likes to give you things so you can metagame with things that don't add up to anything. I don't think Ian's that smart. I think he's pretty dull. He wouldn't do that to me. Red true. herrings! Yeah, that's true. Ian is one of the dumber people I've ever known. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you're probably right, Steve. <laughs> he's just dropping clues everywhere. <laughs> All right, I'll yeah, do whatever. Did you catch that one? He had a breadth of uh, knowledge and like all. Yep. Was a pigeon. They came from the sea. <laughs> As we're walking through the halls, I have the air clear in. Okay. You hear a lot of. Uh, it's diff to. It's difficult to differentiate. Um, there's a lot of movement still about the main part of the exhibits are kind of still being set up. There's a lot of people that are coming into the British Museum. It's not closed or anything like that. Um, so other than staff, there's probably about because right now it's about 40 four. to 50 staff members and maybe another 100, 200 people inside the museum at this point. Because right now it's about 4 o'clock. Because yep. it took an hour with uh, Meriwether. So if we want to go to the Chantry and see if Elfie is welcome. Okay. Professor, do you want to go back and tell folks to guard? You take one of us with you as well. I'm just thinking since you have psychology, you can help calm her down. Get into a hysterical state. 
Thomas and Brock. Bert. You want to go? Where are we going? You can be trusted to kill people that need to be killed, correct? Yes, I also have psychology. So. Okay, excellent. It's pretty low. Pretty low. Are those two teleporting back? To, start, to, uh, to guard the individual, then we'll go back to the chantry. Split the group up. I love it. Stay with the larger part, right? Yep. Yep. Nick. So By larger part, you mean Hunter and I. <laughs> yep. Are you okay with that, Professor? How far is the tantric from here? 30 minutes? I have about 20 minutes. We'll be back in this. So why don't we go to the back, go into a bathroom, have a couple of you stand outside, so the helmet's closed, we'll make sure it's empty. I'll roll out uh, one of my sigils, you two guys step on it, teleport in, I'll roll it up, lock out. Right. Sounds good. Right? What? Keep, keep your hands and feet inside the sigil. Try to remain calm. Okay. You may smell some Where are we going, though? You're going to go back to the other room with uh, Miss uh, Babysitting Rudy. Her, her chew, the taxidermist. Yeah. You'll be on security. Huh? Yep. Babysitting. Your sign is therefore not splitting up. Difference. It isn't, because there's an order. <laughs> Alright, so where are the PCs heading? We find a restroom. Go into the restroom. Outside the museum. Okay. In, in the museum, I don't care. Well, we want everybody to know we've left. Okay, fine. <laughs> so we've left the museum. We go to the diner across the way. They step into the bathroom. Some of us are sitting outside the bathroom waiting for our turn. You guys probably walk four or five blocks until you find a, a particular um, retailer venue that is adequate enough for you to set something like that up in a back room. Sounds good. Look it up. Yeah. So. Boards. Okay. Uh, it's building. Uh, <laughs> His legs are gone. <laughs> Everyone's gonna hold hands. No, so once you're there, um, who is attempting to teleport? Who's staying here? Is it everyone going back in? So you ultimately arrive. Um, I will let the lady know. Do you signal to her that? Tell, tell her to tell her to go into the telegraph room. Wireless telegraph room. Tell her to go in the back room, room and that we're sending a team there using stealth. Yeah, to, exactly to be able to track her in the room. Give me a fast talk roll. How about a fast type? Beep, 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 Oh, you're telling me this over the... Yeah. Yeah, well, we're going to see. Uh, they haven't done anything yet. Fast talk works. They're teleporting. I'll assume that it's the word choice rather than... Yep. I did it by six. She says, all right. Uh, fortunately, she seems to be more aware of her surroundings now. Uh, ultimately, you guys pop in. She seems to stumble back. She knocks over a beaker. It seems like things are all right. She cut herself a little bit. Uh, but she was now, it seems as though she was told that somebody might have been stealthing in. So she's looking around. There's only one main door into the room. So she's just kind of looking around, and then some people fall on a table in the back, and then she freaks out. We don't fall on the table. Like, what the hell is that? She told the prior that she was going to lock herself up in her laboratory as soon as you left. The frog breaks the table or something. In truth, you gave her one second before they teleported to get to the back room. Technically, she teleported prior to him saying anything, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Then frog can help her with first aid. This is what B has on her finger. Yeah, you don't. It doesn't make any logical sense. But now you're in another room. What? Now you're in another room. Logical sense. <laughs> so. Uh, she freaks out a little bit. Is she, how did you get in? I locked the door. Is there another entrance? <laughs> she looks over and kind of looks through the table I'll, that you guys landed on. Dead face. Yeah. 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 She seems to think that's a somewhat... Uh, a, she seems to think that's a, a bit of a... Um, I will add sarcasm. Yeah. All right. Magic, uh, uh, lady. <laughs> She seems to be a bit confused, and she does seem to be, uh, I suppose, very doubtful of what you say. However, she does seem to be very um, comforted by the fact that there's now people here with her. One cat. 
Did Jeb go Did along Jeb? with the Why is my cat with you? No, it's with me. The group. We've done the do not do. Good luck. Where, where are you guys going? We left you guys. To We're going yourself. to the chantry. We're actually going to find you. Got, you got three people. You'll be fine. Four. Count yourself. You got three plus yourself. It's okay. We have the attack on bullet fodder. So. We're going to the chantry. Yeah. All right. Just the three of us. I always assume everyone's together, so. Yeah, me too. That doesn't work too well. Remember the whole conversation about it's not breaking up if you're assigned in a position? Yeah. Right, you guys are on your way to the Chantry, uh, Cabby? Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, probably about ten minutes later, uh, I would say probably about three minutes later, there's a knock on the chemical lab door. Um, it seems to be Adair Merriweather. He seems to be a bit concerned. Yes, uh, Alyssa, are you in there? Are you all right? Is something happening? Alyssa? Alyssa kind of looks over at you guys. Uh, I'm fine. Are, are you sure? Can you open the door? Uh, should we... Uh... Uh, hide. I guess go. Is there anyone to hide? Yeah, there's you can hide behind some of the tables. Alright, we'll do so, but I'll be uh, looking to make sure she don't get stabbed or something. Watch, he's a bad guy, and he automatically stabs her and be like, oh, I was actually the bad guy. <laughs> so ultimately, Sources fails again. <laughs> ultimately, and, he and comes. half our team gets wiped out in the process. Whoops! <laughs> <laughs> well, looks like we're going back to New York. Alyssa, you don't have a good view unless you're trying to uh, hide and have an observable point on the door. Yeah, Alright, you give me a stealth. You'll know if you fail. <laughs> He's looking right at me. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> will you? Will you know you fail? Exactly. He just glances at another room and he's like, Oh, yeah. I was asking him over there. Achoo, achoo. Is there a cat in here? Achoo. You need to stealth too, unless you're trying to hide hey, completely. Hey, what a wild, just guess. If you're trying to hide completely, you don't need to make stealth noise. Uh, 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 he's hiding completely. I'm hiding completely. You may want to write stealth on your sheet. <laughs> Same as camouflage. You're going to want that one as well. Yeah. Don't let Steve lead you astray. There's lots of skills. Yeah, although stealth is one you probably want. And shadowing is another one. So were you... Well, I'm not shadowing. I thought I also had stealth. I didn't see stealth. I don't either. He's just completely hiding. Okay. Uh, it seems as though Adam... Adam Merriweather um, is at the door. Um, he seems to come in, shut it behind him. Alyssa Portu kind of looks around. Uh, Merriweather at this point does kind of look over where your table was, but you kind of drop your head down behind the table. If I don't look at him, he can't see. Uh, it seems yeah, you, yeah. you hear the noise walking towards you. Frank and Thomas are down there. They have like a knife out. And he's got a gun out. He's got a gun out. <laughs> Over here, he's putting gets hungry. <laughs> At this point, you guys can slowly see Adam, who is it, uh, Adair Merriweather, turn the corner. He seems initially a little bit surprised, but then he seems, um, I suppose, reassured at this point. He says, oh, I thought, he says, I thought something happened. He says, some of the mystical candles in my, in my, uh, that I had set up had gone out probably about three, four minutes ago. What are you doing here? What happened? Yeah, he's addressing you. He's, he's looking, looking, he's looking, looking at, you. at you. As you're looking up to him. As you're crouching, but if you keep looking at the floor, he can't see you. <laughs> Hide. <laughs> Daddy, you can't see me. I'm invisible. <laughs> it's called mannequin. Yep. <laughs> We're, uh... We're on security. We're gonna be doing stakeout tonight. So, what, you came into the the building through magic. Oh, yeah. I haven't detected anything unusual. They seem to be very good at covering their mystical footprint, as I had said before. I I imagine if I was able to detect you coming in, that they might have too. However, he'll he'll head back to um, he'll be leaving for the evening, and he'll let you continue to work. Well, we should have thought about that one anyways. 
in hindsight, it's great. <laughs> now we know. Yeah. Again, we have Protective Services 2.0, much better. No. <laughs> Otherwise, he'll tell Alyssa no, to stay safe. Protective Services 2.0. Um, he says to make sure that you stay within the uh, company of the um, investigators here, and uh, she'll lock up behind him. We'll start investing in a girl named Sarah Connor. <laughs> right now. I have to point you tell me that. <laughs> Puddin looks at the floor and looks off at an adjacent jar at the same time. <laughs> Alright, well, I'll keep my uh, wand on me because I don't want to. Uh, you know, do fire fights or anything. Yeah, they're still up against the wall. In a chemical lab? Come on. It's based on the fire. I can't even use my wand because it's highly... Well, I'm sorry. I can't even move on that tree. Give a wand? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to move on that tree. Yeah, flammable web. Yeah, I'm going to have to move on that tree. Yeah, flammable web. Yeah, I'm going to have to move on that tree. Yeah, I'm going to have to move on that tree. Yeah, I'm going to have to move on that tree. Yeah, I'm going to have to move on that tree. Yeah, I'm going to have to move on that tree. Yeah, I'm going to have to move on that tree. Yeah, I'm going to have to move on that tree. Yeah, I'm going to have to move on that tree. Yeah, I'm going to have to move on that tree. Yeah, I'm going to have to move on that tree. Yeah, so, getting to the Chantry, um, it takes a little bit to get inside. They tell you that they're planning on waking up Althea close to about 3 a.m. the next morning. Um, they're going to slowly wake her up, see how she does. They believe that probably about 95% of it's out of her system completely. Some of it's just bound up in her tissues, and it's going to take another week to get rid of it. But she should be coherent, and there shouldn't be any lasting damage from that you can tell. I'll pick up my package that's here at the Chantry. Which package? Wine of Bast. Okay, yep. Yeah. Is she awake or no? Yep. They're going to wake her up. Okay. Uh, they're going to wake her up at 3 a.m. the next day. If it is an emergency, they can try to wake her up, but that's going to be the... They would feel more comfortable in the next few hours. Because uh, it'll, it'll, it'll be, rather than about... 90% of her, was it 90% out of her system, closer to 95? Okay. Yeah. Oh, while they're waiting, do we have um, that woman relay that information to be about uh, Delph will probably be better than um, doing our other way? She can. Uh, for the most part, you see that uh, 1B either communicates back or when she clicks it and she sees the response. Every time, she's just generally shocked and bewildered, looking at a little tiny disc on her ring finger. Uh, there's no lines. There's nothing else coming in. And she taps on it in disbelief like some sort of children's toy, and then it taps back, and she's like, is this real? Is this happening? I told her it was wireless. Come on. <laughs> wireless telegraphs, you know? You should just have a wire attached to it. You spool it out until you get to the hallway, and then just tie it to the doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> there, you feel better. <laughs> what are they going to do? They've already invented the wireless telegraph. They're using regular. <laughs> just tell it functions. But mind you, away. the object, provided she has any kind of background in yep. the sciences. This is literally just a disc and a spring mechanism. Have battery, I yeah, there's no battery that she can tell in there. It seems to be spring loaded. The disc seems to move with its own volition. All right. So the PCs can hold out. Um, are you? I suppose. What are you doing inside the lab? Are you still kind of crouched behind desks for the next so much period of time? I'm just gonna lay down, rock gun hand. Like right. I'm almost afraid to like order anything. <laughs> 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 Holy shit, she's very hungry today. Exactly. Yeah. Frock comes up, picks up the pizza, and they're like, oh, I totally forgot why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> if we're done at the chantry, can we go back to the wax museum so I can talk to the neighbors to see if they see people coming and going? Frock would go get it. Because it's going to be a couple hours till she's going to come here, right? No, we're not supposed to come so yeah, a couple hours. To the wax museum. For the most part, it seems like um, the uh, fire brigade has cordoned off the area. Um, the structure is unsound. It's all wrapped up right now. Um, probably just rope or boards. Talk to the neighbors. Businesses to say, have you seen the owners coming and going? What do they look like? Uh, you can give me some uh, diplomacy or streetwise. How about interrogation? 
If you want to, you'll be able to hold out on the information. They don't necessarily have to start breaking things, right? It can just be about asking questions. You can do a subtle. Yep. You can give me an interrogation as well. Um, I'll look inside the rubble with my monocle to see if there's any... I rolled a four in my diploma. The whole rubble seems to be uh, caked in probably burnt alchemical goods. Um, uh, and, yeah. A mesh of alchemical goods that are kind of all burnt together. Is it all burnt down or only partial burnt down? Only the bottom level and the floor below it. The second floor is pretty good, but a lot of the structural supports are pretty badly burned, so it's kind of corned off right now. We didn't grab the ledger. The ledger's still upstairs. No, we grabbed the ledger. Did we? And we took the... You didn't grab the ledger. Uh, it got left. Thomas thought about going up in the burning building and getting it back, but the guys decided to run. Presumably, the, the second story didn't get too badly burned, so it probably is up there. It's not waterlogged. Nope. You grabbed a book that you guys found inside of the safe that he had managed to get out. The ledger was on the book and slightly was on fire from the bre the fire breath that uh, Frank did, but there was some... Now I have to beat Tom. We were afraid of fire. Why didn't you just pick it up? You yep. could have put the fire out right near the last, Right near the last session, um, Thomas, I told Tom, so you could run upstairs and grab it. The fire wasn't too bad up there, but he decided not to. And How hard would it be to get up there and get it? So. Um... There's still a fair amount of people in the surrounding area. If you want to do it quietly, you have to go through the back. The structural integrity of the building probably isn't terribly that great. And um, presumably just getting around the interior rubble, so not too hard. I can grab it, then we can have more ideas who's been dropping checks to. Why don't you go check if it's still there? All right, I'm going to go check to see if it's there. Once again, no, 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 he was ordered. New guy needs to know he was ordered, thus not splitting up the group, but technically no, 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 no. splitting up the group. I was not ordered. I dropped the hint to see if it was okay. The subtleties. It was approved. I rolled a four on my diplomacy. I did it by. I rolled a four. That's critical, right? And then I did it by ten. That's critical, right? So it's like hypercritical. Hypercritical. <laughs> they know nothing. Damn it! Actually, right. I did it by a lot. And then what was your interrogation? So that's just a normal critical. So he. <laughs> No, it's super hypercritical. When Steve yep. said he had the super, super hyper premium critical, I <laughs> These said... These are fourth dimensional dice! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I said I won't steal your thunder, so I didn't say it. Basically, I stand back amazed at B's diplomatic skills and how she regales everybody and Being a word sucks the information out of them. Uh, so, talking to the various cinemas in the area, um, it seems as though... A lot of the owners do know the people that work there. It's a small establishment, primarily Gregory Winthrop, um, uh, an assistant work there. However, he's seen various people that he's hired on as of late. Um, they say that they've been even working with a few interns. Um, they can give you the description of from the British Museum on occasion. Uh, they've been picking up a lot of goods. Uh, was it uh, wax, things of that nature? Do any of the interns seem to meet the? Descriptions of the interns or the question. Ah, uh, you I haven't interrogated any of the interns. Okay. Uh, that hasn't happened yet. Okay. I'm not making any Which way do you guys want to take this? Thing? But I use my drawing skill to get pictures of these people. You can give me a drawing. Is it drawing or is it sketch artist? <laughs> I have drawing. I'll say it's an artist drawing. <laughs> I did it by six. The people feel pretty confident that what you've drawn is very accurate. Um, you may have seen some of these individuals. You'd have to get like a good, solid look at their face. But definitively, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're cultists. They could have just simply gone to the Emporium. But you think that you have a higher likelihood in a smaller subgroup that... Guilty. Guilty. There's how one man! <laughs> how about the owner? Get his sketch too, right? Yep. Okay. We got sketches. Yeah. It's awesome. Let's go to the back um, alley where you'll we're find with your 11 that uh, Gregory Winthrop was here earlier during um, the fire. Um, he said that he, what is it, they believe that he had said something about a, a group of um, vandals that broke in and let the whole place on fire and gave. Um, they'll say, now surprisingly enough, kind of your description. But. Yeah, he had some evil doings over there. We're with the Abdura group. We're totally legit, I tell him. <laughs> you mean, so. I'll give you an eye on your lad. Yeah, they've heard of Abdura before. Yeah. Um, they part. want to know if you're the London. Um, they thought that you looked We're different. We're closely associated with the London Abdura group, I say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've, 
<laughs> because our branch has a bad name here. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, but they say that they're familiar with uh, some of the Abduro people from the London branch in the paper, and they didn't recognize any of you. If I wasn't before, I'm definitely uh, speaking in my London accent, too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just switch over mid-conversation, because that won't be odd. <laughs> No, no, Can kidding. I help you? Good day, Gov. No, it's like, are you mocking me? No, of course not. <laughs> this is how I normally talk. Did I count to how easy it is to pick up their accent? It's quite easy. Now pat him on the head. Yeah. Good little urchin. We go to the back alley where we're going around to go with Jeb, and we wait for him to fall through the second floor. All right. That's yep. fine. He's cat ball. I'm not going to fall. He's cat ball. Don't forget. I, oh, that's always it's a always given. Yeah. I'll check substance Climb up to the top. my woman okay. <laughs> For the most part, I mean, it is a precarious... Um, the likelihood that it's going to collapse in on you while you're in here is pretty low, but, I mean, some good storm activity in this structure is probably going to be collapsed. It's very likely that the fire brigade is probably going to knock it down ahead of time. Yeah, as long so as I can grab the ledger and leave. Give me a scrounge. Eat. Uh, you can manage to find it. It's pretty waterlogged. There was a massive deluge, uh, deluge of water that broke through the um, ceiling into the second floor and flooded the areas up there. There's even some rooms that you open up the door and water is continually spinning. It was it that is still leaking out from. Um, but yeah, it's here. It would take a little bit of restoration work, but I'll use my monocle to see if there's anything else in here that probably we missed. <clears throat> You don't believe so. There might have been possibly some things downstairs, but as I said before, it's all caked in alchemical goods that have been melted and recooled. And I'll make my way yeah. back down. First floor? Yeah. The stairs are not in great condition. There's definitely a lot of chemicals that cause the fire to get out of hand pretty quickly, but it's not yep, too bad. Gotcha. Get out. It's waterlogged. I can suck the water out of it. Could we just put it in the sun when it dry out? Or could you use your... Uh, pull the water out of it? That's what you said. Oh, <laughs> Actually, for him, it's his gloves. Yeah, it's my gloves. Sorry. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, that's right, you got water control of water management. I yeah. forgot. Yeah, you should totally do that, then. I'll try it. Build up your... Right. What's it called? Oh, Paradox. Build up your Paradox. <laughs> Do it in front of us too, because so, I'm, I'm watching. Here. We, six, but we don't look surprised as you do we look, believe, What happened to the water? <laughs> we believe in everything. <laughs> do we? Um, <laughs> you're able to rip a fair amount of the water out from the book. Um, some of the pages actually do become very brittle, uh, to the point of being able to snap in half. But you can. You might want to put a little water back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's kind of like a desiccated book in the desert at this point, and you can legibly read, I mean, there's still, the ink has smeared, and you can't really remove the ink back to where it was. Well, you could theoretically, I could draw but, it. I but you don't, it would be you writing shit in the book rather than what was in the book prior. Sure, it's not just enhancing the picture of the computer. Yep, adding more pixels. <laughs> Alright, is there anything that we could pick out at this point? Um, you have photographic memory, and you have looked, uh, what is it? You had looked at this a little bit as you're passing through, or at least somebody did. Yes. Um, and a lot of this stuff is signed off by Gregory Winthrop. There seems to be a strong correlation that unless somebody is pulling the, uh, the wool over his eyes, it's very likely that he might be connected to these wax um, simulacrums or the wax chunk blocks that were holding dead bodies in the basement. He's, there's nobody else really checking over here. I mean... There's a little bit of accounting work done by, um, I forgot the name, I gave it up prior. Um, but other than that, he seems to be controlling virtually everything here at the Emporium. Winthrop? Winthrop. Yeah. Are you ready to go back to the museum? Yeah. Anything else we want to do over all? So with him, if, we can, okay. if he does move, and we got that combo set up with initiative, even if we don't have initiative, it doesn't matter, we can push him right back. Let's go. Let's go. Is there any mannequin arms here with wax on them already? Probably melted in the fire. Uh, I suppose it's all gone. Never mind. Uh, I was from the question. They don't always kill them all, so if they ignore it, push them through again. Let's go back. Let's go back. Radio ahead to the team that we're on our way back. Okay. Strike the lady if they can. 
Are you going to teleport? No, she said to sneak in. Don't you think we should go in in secret so they don't know if there's anyone with us? No, they said that if Avery could, or not Avery, but if uh, Meriwether detected us, they, they could detect us. Well, she's, how close are we to her going home? Oh, um, right now? Because we did ask her when she was going to go home. This wasn't a new day, so I'll probably say it's close to about 7 p.m. right now, so um, probably three hours. Okay. She could leave early, though. Go in and question the head curator if he's still there and say, hey, who are these people? He was going home, though. That's, what I, that's that. what I would be interested in. Let's drive back from Maine with that. If anything, we go back to the diner and have the group teleport to us. Just leave in there. And then go back in. Well, let's just go see if uh, Meriwether's there. Well, if you want us to all go back in, we shouldn't teleport in there. We should have them teleport out. Yeah. I'll walk in through the front door. Yeah. Otherwise, when we're on grounds, we know we can teleport. Have them teleport out. No. Leave her there for three hours? No, we can't. She'll have the ring. We'll be on site. Let's just say we're continuing the investigation on the lead culpits. I'll do whatever. I'll probably not be. I've been overruled, Nick, okay. so. Alright. We'll see him in there then. Okay, we'll leave him in there. Alright, we'll leave him in there. Okay, we're we'll uh, gonna talk to one through. Is that his name? Yeah. Well, Merriweather? Merriweather. Yeah. Then we want to track down the guy that owned the waxworks, so that's who you want to talk to. We have no means of doing that. No yeah. leads and a picture. We have no answers. So I want to show okay. it to Winthrop and say, do you know who this is? Do you know who these interns are? Okay, okay. Put names on their faces. All right. Yeah. All right. So you guys are heading back to the British Museum? Yep. Uh, coming out, the doors are locked. Um, you will get the... You will get uh, Officer Clyde. Um, kind of checks with a flashlight, uh, opens the door. He wasn't told that you're going to be staying here tonight, but you continuing your investigation. Yep. That is correct, sir. Um, all right, then he can go check with, uh, who the hell? Avery. Captain? Avery, yeah. Probably about five minutes pass. Um, and then ultimately you see Avery and, uh, Avery and, uh, two other guards. Clyde and uh, Officer Kine. Flipping through uh, my papers to see if any of these guards match the description of any of the people at the visit the museum. I got a photograph for me. I do it just for their benefit. I'll just say that. All right. Um, prior to this, they run up to the door. Um, Avery's telling you. I think Adam, what is it? I think Adair Merriweather is dead. He has you rush in really quickly. Um, I'm a sucker for an adventure. You just throw two dice. Maybe I'll get plus one for the rest of the night. You're going to burn your luck, Steve? Or? We, we see the bad guy. Um, yeah, I'll burn my luck. Of course, if you already burned it. Yeah, it was an hour ago. I get it once an hour. It's two minutes past my luck. Yeah, yeah, barely. Very nice. Very right. convenient, I might add. <laughs> it's not convenient. I've seen you guys take breaks prior to getting your luck back. Like, we're about to go into fight, but I'm going to oh, take an unusually long beverage break. <laughs> <laughs> this Coke is delicious. I must sip it in small quantities. And then all of a sudden, they're like, And then they're watching great. their watch, and they're like, and we go in now. <laughs> it's a mere coincidence. What happens is we all go get food, and then you get hungry. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. And they're like, well, might as well use the bathroom, and then everybody has to use the bathroom. <laughs> Roll pretty shitly for the first two times, but luckily you had third sure roll. Um, one of the individuals does bear a striking resemblance to Officer Dennis Clyde. Okay. Not for sure. Well, you'd say it's pretty close. Okay. But he could have been out there on legitimate business from the, the museum. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I as you rush in, pictures. um, what do you do? Yeah. Just you rush in. Uh, it seems like the door is open. A dare Merriweather. Um, it looks as though somebody pushed the door farther in, and Adair Merriweather's body is immediately on the interior. Um, you can't confirm it's his body, but it looks like him from looking. Uh, Avery tells you that he went to go check. Um, what is it? Get the keys for. Um, what is it? Some of the more public areas. Um, and it seemed like his light was still on, so he thought that he was still here. Um, he didn't answer. He got worried. He opened up the door with his keys. He tried to push it in. There was something blocking it, and he found the body. 
So what kind is, is the Merryweather that talked to us What's wrong with him? One? How did he die? He doesn't know right now. I mean, he tried to push in the door. His body's laying there. So he's not disturbing. He yeah. didn't. He would have probably reached in and checked his pulse, found out it was gone, and tried to grab you guys really quick. We'll check. We open the door so we can all get in. I'll watch bees, clues, and take a look at. I'm gonna. I'll keep. I'll you watch guys. as Hunter. Okay. I don't know anything. I make room for her to get in there, and I watch I the crime scene investigation. Forensics. I'll set up a perimeter. Cargo's on, looking for the Roman yeah. Legion. <laughs> I keep. I keep an eye on the guard she fingered with the photo. Um, there is a massive area around Adair's Merryweather's chest that seems to just have virtually no light to it. There's also an exceptionally bright light coming from the door, and um, immediately past out the adjacent window. Somebody blasts them from out there. Does it look like pattern damage? Does it look like pattern damage? Uh, you'll have to give me thaumatology. I did it by some of them, huh? That's always a good way to do a successful DM. Four. Did by four. For the most part, his pattern seems to be intact. It seems like somebody or something ripped the life force from his body. Some, no, not pattern damage. Somebody or something ripped the life force from his body. It's even worse. I'm kind of watching uh, Clyde when she's throwing, when we're throwing all this magic. I'm not sure if Bia around. said anything about Clyde as she, yet. She pointed the picture yeah. to me. Yeah. I did show those two guys the picture. So I'm just watching them as we are kind of... He seems to be a bit spooked. Um, Avery seems like he's calmly handling his ship, just being totally I've lost seen a here. Tiger come alive. Um, you can see you. that even though he's kind of keeping a, a calm disposition, his hands will tremble. Uh, he wasn't prepared to see what just happened. Um, not that it's surprising. Just he seems to give you, from a psychology standpoint, is he had no idea what just transpired. He was just going to get some of the master keys for the rooms that you might be investigating. But Clyde, does he seem to... He's a little spooked, but overall you would say doesn't seem to be, like... Freaking out. Freaking out. <laughs> That's a long window. window. I'm a sucker. I'm trying to see what's out there. I got my gun on. Ray gun, actually. For the most part, uh, what was your forensics? Oh, never made a roll on forensics yet. Not bad. Minus Did it by five. Taking a look around, you're using the goggles on and off. Uh, you'd almost say, actually, it seems as though Adam Merriweather had his hand on the doorknob, uh, with his left hand on the doorknob. Uh, I don't know Yeah, left hand on the doorknob. And... It seems more concentrated at the door and less so on the other side near the window, as though it was greatly diminished passing through the room. Um, it's almost as though he was right next to the door, um, possibly even um, either leaving for the day or answering the door. I start typing on my thing, my ring, and I say, the doorknob may be trapped with your door. Make sure she doesn't touch it. Make sure you investigate it. The doorknob doesn't seem to have a light to it. There's a center mass in the door that just goes right through. The door looks perfectly fine if you just look at it. There's absolutely no scratches, well, nothing else. Or there's the only door, a, there's yeah. only a mystical resonance that's left on the door itself. Probably a single. Yeah. Well, this is unfortunate, uh, Captain. Uh, Mary Weathers passed here, but. Clyde, can you tell me what, uh, he hasn't called the police as of yet, but he's informed all the other guards, okay. uh, and they're heading back to this area right now. Well, actually, it's probably good to use some of the other guards, because Merriweather, prior to his demise, had informed us that he had strong suspicions about young guardsman Clyde here, who's apparently been working with the Impe uh, with the uh, Wax Imperium about something, maybe like an art of these... Uh, Clyde seems brain. to be a little bit surprised. Um, he seems to shrug his shoulders. You can see Avery... Just kind of look at him without getting any kind of motion, but he does like, like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, we were questioning some folks there, and oh, well, you can show him the photo. Right? Yeah, I right, flipped through some papers, put his picture on top. Here's young Clyde. He's got the wax emporium. Although the name, the people there, I they didn't know his name. But... I, I, I picked up orders from the wax museum before. Well, uh, you've, you've been fingered with spending an unusual amount of time there. I go pick him up. I, I'm. I suppose he, he says that I'm the low man on the totem pole, so 
I you, have to go there and pick up supplies. That is a convenient cover story, isn't it? That's what happened, so... Yeah, yeah. Do you want to just keep digging this hole deeper? Do you want a fearsome stare? Or do you want to come clean? Do you have a fearsome stare or any of that? Oh my god. I don't He's think got so. I've got this theory. A portion is hand off. Now you'll talk. <laughs> you could jump in whenever you want me. I'll jump in. We know you're involved. If you come clean now, it'll go better for you. I honestly don't know what you're talking about. Tech wise, body language. Enigma. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta rattle the cage and see if something shakes loose. It never does. <laughs> it does. Oh, tell us that Mary Weatherly died. Oh, Mary no. Weatherly's dead. <laughs> Just in case he comes back, I'll Mary Weatherly's dead. Somehow he died with a rune or something. Probably from the door, maybe the doorknob. I'm pretty sure I don't need to see um, it. Stole his life essence. I would say overall, um, you're not sure. He does, doesn't does seem to be acting overly guilty. Hunter, you would feel as though, he, well, he doesn't seem to be acting guilty. He's surprisingly not like affected by intimidation. Uh, almost like a disconnect. Is he a glowy person? No, he's actually lower than normal. But once again, I've mentioned multiple yep, times yep. in the past, that's not associated with yep. magical power. It just happens to coincide. So are you going to start to worry if I start to apportion body parts on you? Or? What's a portion? Well, what he does is puts a small rip in your skin. And then he makes it bigger. And then bigger to a point where you just bleed out or your guts fall. I think it'd be Wait, best if we want to administrate the bleed for a while. I, I've talked to the police. Yeah, we're not the police. <laughs> <laughs> the captain tries to be supporting you up, but you're like, you're now insinuating that you're going to cut up a guardsman. <laughs> so, it's got Captain Avery is. <laughs> Captain Avery seems to be trying to be on your side, but every once in a while, he's giving me a look like, "Are you are you trying to intimidate him? Are you you're real? Because if you're going to cut off fingers, I'm going to have to ethically possibly stop this from happening." You asked what a portion was. I'm just telling you. What it is. I don't. I don't. I don't need any kind of surgery. What What do you want to know? What's your affiliation? With Show the, the rest of the pictures. If you know the rest of the, yeah, yeah. I guess you people are our contacts. Do you know who this person is? Show them the top picture. Okay. You'll say, yeah, that's a, this such and such intern. Who's this person? Once again, answers. Who's this person? He can do his answer. Get all the way back Get to his picture. Answer. Who's this? That's me. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> How many of these people accompanied you to pick up? Uh, do they recognize the guy that was the owner of the shop? He says, yeah. Do you know where we can find Mr. Michael Winthrop? Uh, yeah, he has a small um, place. He'll give you the rough directions of where it is. Have you been to this personal house several times, Sam? I don't think you can go right now. Uh, not that I remember. <laughs> There's ruins that explode. I tell you guys what I'm picking, the vibes I'm picking up on this guy. He's got a strange disconnect. Um, you know, I just look at him and explain my feelings to the group. Uh, Jeb, you, he seems to be just kind of staring at the floor right now. You just get kind of a bad feeling from him. From him? Okay. Tell you to back up. Here so it goes. You guys need back. initiative checks. Well, he's going to burst into flames. That's See, bad guys if, you rattle, if you rattle the cage, something Jeez. breaks loose. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Beat it by three. So it'd be by... Can you get a plus one for combat? Or? Yeah. Because so be, nobody believes I'm a good leader. <laughs> oh, we so get I make it by uh, five. We get a plus one from combat reflexes? Yeah. If you have combat reflexes, beat it by four. four. Okay. I failed. Four. They're not there. They're not there. Oh, yeah. Forgot. <laughs> They're just in the back of the like, Harry Weather's dead? Exactly. Tell Beast something else. Beast thing's going off. You're like, I'm fighting people. The building shakes a little bit. Was that an explosion? <laughs> Try to get a hold of Beast. So, beat it by five. Ultimately, it seems like um, the captain is about... The captain tries to detain him as well, but he's a bit slower than you guys. Um, yeah, that's all you can really tell. He seems to be looking at the floor when I say anything, and he doesn't seem to respond to you guys saying, Look out! Uh, you just kind of get an uncomfortable feeling. So, as you guys were kind of talking, he just kind of looks down the ground, not necessarily guiltily, but... there, buddy? Push him on the shoulder. And he explodes! Yeah, that's fine. He doesn't seem to respond. I said, look at me, I kind of slapped his face. Yeah, 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 back to you. Um, 
I will throw up deflect harm. <laughs> First, I'm gonna do deflect harm. Nah, go offense. You want me to go? Because I go offense, I'm just gonna kill him. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw up. Fuck it. You're right. Curse it is! Did you the curse? Yeah. That's right, offense. Do I get any pluses? I feel like we're suddenly in full metal jacket for Dr. Beat it by two. It does seem as though you get a more appropriate bonus when you're dealing with yep. yeah, purely yeah, 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 yeah. really bad shit. Beat it by two. <laughs> in effect, but I ticked that up, so there we go. So, uh, from where you guys are right now, um, it seems as though about that time he seems to uh, kind of clench his hands, but you can kind of see him form something with his hands. Uh, and this is what something happens. You push him a little bit, uh, Jeb starts to uh, chant the Whammy! tome, and, or not the tome, but the Whammy! incantation. Um, uh, I'm gonna try. It was a, it was a, it was a low one. Building. It was a building. <laughs> I feel the potential building within you. Oh, we'll get to see what shit he brings to the table here. Well, little peon. Peon. Somebody's put a spell on him that if he's ever fingered, he can bust, I'm sure. Alright, uh, you end up taking nine points of damage to the chest. You do as well. You didn't see anything. You just feel uh, what kind as of though, damage. Uh, damage. It's There's a no portion. It's, it's an apportion. That's oh. what it feels like. It feels like you got a millimeter slit in the middle of your. It feels organs. as though your chest cavity just goes completely numb. Oh. You lose your breath. It becomes hard to breathe. See breath. Wait. Um, I got DR on my chest. That actually does not matter for this. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Not even with the scar, huh? Nope. Ian said Carl Mint had a breath of knowledge. Oh, oh well, the good news is after oh, this, our heart will have. However, it does seem as though. He dicks it up a little bit from what you saw. He does step back, and he, for whatever reason, his left arm, and he just kind of slouches on the left side, and he just looks at you like dead pan face, and just backs up a meter. Can you give me one reason why I should kill you where you stand? Avery, uh, what is it? His leg just falls out from underneath him. He seems to be generally shocked. That's work. Avery is. Avery just had his leg killed. <laughs> All right, so back to you guys. But how much danger are me and Barton in? Uh, I don't know. I'm just aiming at the, the door line. like there's probably a lot. Don't touch the door. Because <laughs> he was guard duty. He was making his rounds. He was doing things with his hands, huh? If you want to take this guy prisoner, I suppose we do this. Yes. Sure. Yes. All right. I'm going to. <laughs> you're just standing there like. I pull my hand out of my pocket with my brass knuckles and I punch him in the face. <laughs> You can't back up. I'll take the walls next to him. He'll try to dodge. He'll burn fatigue. I'm gonna burn Pretty fatigue. Pretty messed up though. Uh, put some hurt on him. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Face is yeah. minus five, right? Yep. Face is minus five, so I think I succeed by nine. This should be by seven, so success by two. Okay. Did I hit him? Uh, yeah. He dicked up his dodge. It seems as though he might have been able to dodge away if it wasn't for the fact that his hip, and he's slouching on that side. Yeah. They don't seem to respond quickly. Okay. So you roll for damage. So I'm going to do a total of uh, five burn fatigue, so that'd be uh, seven points in the face. Brass knuckles. Wow. Um, it seems as though he hits the ground. Um, he seems to be unconscious. Okay. Search him. He seems to be unconscious. I pick up his head. Wah! Just one more time. <laughs> Doesn't register with him. Okay. Uh, it's very likely that his cheekbone, his eyes, are probably pretty damaged, and his, I would say that he would have lost two front teeth. No, no, no! You just you did it wrong. You break his fingers. <laughs> right. Can't do any incantations. Did one of the guards get hurt too? There was him, Avery, and did I say that there was uh, kind? Kind. I would say kind is a little bit farther back. Didn't get hurt. Do first aid on. Check his vitals since then. First aid vitals. Kill this guy. Can you give me a diagnosis? He seems to be generally unconscious. I'll just like, um, I'll bind my wounds with a hunter. Uh, 
Wounded by one diagnosis. Blind wounds by two. Okay. Uh, it seems like this particular type of damage is very slow to heal. You generally can leave, what is it, fix about one point of fatigue, or one point of HP every ten minutes. Uh, you're not sure what happened, it just, it's not necessarily pattern damage where like it just doesn't fix, but it is definitely slow going. Uh, you would imagine that, do you have diagnosis? No. You're not sure, it's weird. The diagnosis for one, but specifically looking at his teeth to see if he has a caplet tooth or something that's released the black gold venom in the Looking around, there is um, a fake tooth in the far back. Um, he seems to be knocked clean unconscious. Maybe he was unable to use it, or maybe it's just a. It looks odd. It does seem like there is. We got to pull it does look fragile it? enough where it looks as though you could break case, it. Pull up players. <laughs> the lady shouldn't have to do this. I say I grab it. Rip. Give me a dex check. I will try to be very careful not well, to break it if I have to cut the right? gum out to exercise it, I'll do That's that. That's what the dex instead. check is for. Okay. Ultimately, this tooth looks like it was designed to be broken with enough pressure. Right, So, but I'm trying to, I'll take extra time too, I'm not trying to rush it or anything like that. It's a surgery or a, a dex check, I'm assuming you don't have surgery, so a dex check. Well, success by two. Ultimately, you feel, unless you're going to cut significantly into his gums and cause a lot of bleeding, you're not going to get this out. I'm okay with that. You see, I hand you back your pliers, I pull out a knife. <laughs> this will work better. Can you give me initiative check? So by five. All right. Um, ultimately, as you're cutting into it, the individual is knocked unconscious from the blow to the face, but as you start to cut in, he eventually wakes up. Uh, it seems as though he bites down on your uh, knife to a certain extent. Okay. It does look like it is cracked and it is leaking into his mouth, but not fully. Okay. He's fighting you, and it doesn't seem as though he's just still looking at you with that kind of, uh, I suppose, um, uh, a dead... dead pan face, as though nothing's going on. Kind of your, uh, what the hell is that? Um, who was Don Knotts? Who's, uh, what was his character name in, uh, he was the deputy officer? In, uh, Mayberry? Yeah. RFT? Uh, what was his deputy's name? Uh, I can't remember. Barney Fife? Yeah, he gives it kind of a Barney Fife, like, this innocent look, but he's biting down on a, a knife, and he's looking at your pan face, and he's not registering any kind of pain. I reach a finger out, I touch the one tooth, I teleport it to their signal. Alright. You know that you're... I've teleported doors before okay. and things like that. You don't have a starting point? Uh, uh, I don't have a starting point, but I do have an end point. Yep. Give me your roll. <laughs> you teleport out of this face. Nope, just this tooth. Oh, this tooth. Boom goes the dynamite. So that's a six, so that's success by seven. Alright. The tooth is gone. You can give me a perception check. Why don't you start check. with that? I only have 13, but I rolled very well. Uh, perception, vision? Uh, eight, seven, eight, nine, six, success by 10. Okay. Uh, I'll talk to you over here really quick. Um, however, there's some that still got into his system, and it doesn't need to get out of... You're not sure if that's enough to actually kill him or not? He seems to be fairly resilient for just some... I, as soon as Random I can, guy. I'm just like, you know, be swallow the poison and try to... But All you, right. you want to talk to him? Yep. Give him some epicap syrup. I'm just curious what's happening now. Are we standing in the room? You see like, a tooth appear in the circle. <laughs> Or his, all his team. Oh, I want to run. Uh, he rolled pretty good. He did by seven or ten. Wonder if he's controlling them through magically hypnotizing them so anyone could potentially be bad and not even know because they're innocent. That sucks. A guilty Elantro. Did we even check her teeth? Can't say we did. No, I don't think we did. I didn't even think about that. Well, if you do both 
So I think she's gonna wake up and just be like, again? Possibly. But then you have a whole bunch of people that can do something. I don't play for us. We're stuck with the main bad guy in that museum. Could be, I don't know. What, the girl? She could be the main bad guy. We know so little. We stumble through investigations on the freaking guy. What about the conjuration for poison blood? How much? Six. Six? Anyway, sorry. Maybe she asked us to watch over her knowing that we put us. <laughs> so instead of telling you about the poison, basically, I guess you see me kneeling over the guy. I stand up, I grab his one arm and one leg, and I kind of spin around a half circle, toss him in a direction. I tell you guys to all run that direction, and then I start to run the other direction. As soon as he's teleported out the tooth, you get a sinking feeling in your stomach. Yep. Yeah. Crap. I'm trying to run. I can take off. All right, what are, your base, what are your movements with your current encumbrances? Actually, you guys are in a separate room, so... They're safe. Well, theoretically. Uh, the funny thing about... How yep. this works is space is not not necessarily a factor. I move on. Five. I got a five speed move. Five I'll spend the team, though. <laughs> five. Four. Four. Well, no, my bad. Bad. Six. I got six speed. Not encumbered right now. Well, I got the backpack, and that that's. Are you wearing the backpack? Or yeah. You're leaving it yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. I got the backpack. It's on. Okay. So, so what's in the backpack? The table cloth. That's it? Yeah. Okay. He's not there. Not there. Not there? Okay. I keep pointing over at him. Um, Avery does, what is it? Officer Kind just kind of seems stunned. He's not sure quite what's happening. Avery just kind of picks him up and then attempts to hobble away. It seems like Avery falls to his feet as though in the emergency he didn't realize that his leg is not working right. It's almost like the whole thing is asleep or something. And he just hits the ground and then stumbles off and both of them continue to move at that point. Um, you guys see a streak of what seems to be red lightning coming from off the border that he's heading down. Uh, then I can talk to you again, Hunter. What the heck's going on? Well, I don't even know because I'm not there. The legionaries have become active. So, I'm fight. glad we didn't order any food that delivering, I would have been dead. Wouldn't have been your problem. Should have delivered into the museum. <laughs> I do this a million times. See, I'm full set of those days. If not, it goes to Yeah, like three of them. It just was like a half of all the. Gotcha. So you get one in each. Yeah. Except for the D10s, usually they give you the percentile. Yeah. Single. What's that style called? I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I just call it my mustard dice. Catch up with mustard? Yeah. Right. Steve's gonna eat it. Delicious. <laughs> they look like fire. Can I touch one? Yeah. Alright. <laughs> In hindsight, I probably should have picked dice that I could see the little hips better on. Yep. <laughs> At the time, I was just trying to pick up dice that were different from all the people I was playing with. Yeah. Well, everybody's got Cthulhu dice, but... They're available on Amazon. So, Fantasy Black Flight Channel. Games is the people that make these, right? So I went over to Fantasy Flight over the weekend, yeah. and they sell the packs of five for 20 bucks. You can get them cheaper on Amazon. And I was like... Yeah. Yeah. And That's they a big also markup, have, isn't it? Uh, like, the Bone in the Black Armor,
It was a teleportation well, trap, wasn't it? Let me know what you find out. Find out. You know what? I have a. I have the wine of bass. I should have drank that shit before we started. <laughs> should have been passed out of around. It's a protection wine. Protection wine. How much? What does it protect you from? That beats me. <laughs> I'm sure I know. It's it. Yeah, we should have probably drank that earlier. I'm sure, I'm sure I know. It's just that. It'll take a total of 53 damage. There's death checks there. I know that, so. Well, Hunter is the best, the most adept at not dying during this high HP. Three death checks. The death checks are straight up. Yep. I know you can't really try. So that one is by ten. That one is by. I'm assuming the Cthulhu dice don't apply to this, right? They're just dice. If you want to use a Cthulhu dice, it might not be good if you roll. Right. So I'm just, I'll roll these just to avoid confusions. Uh, so that's by 7. And that's by 10 again. Okay. Uh, so you're going to be consciousness checks. It's going to be a major wound. So the first one is going to be a minus 10, then minus 2. Excuse me. So what's your, what death check are you at? Uh, number... Three. Three. So it's going to be a minus 10 for the first one, then minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. Okay. So minus 3 for the or minus 10 for the first one. So I succeed by 1 with the penalty. And it's minus 3. So I succeed by even more. And last one. Big success again. I can talk to you over here. <laughs> Just come back to his dice. Pretty much. I like how you did your name. That's pretty good. Yeah, boy. Alright, but I like that. What do you guys think happens? I think that uh, when we teleported, they're like, oh, they have teleport, so I know that they use that. So, how do you do a teleport trap? Because right. then you guys warned us about a bear, um, uh, with the door things, he was checking, so he knew what he was going to do with the keys, so it's probably, uh, I don't know, someone from security, but it could be a whole bunch of different people, it could be the Jeffrey and Emma Jamie, it just takes one really powerful person to like brainwash people and they don't even know that they have this suggestion. So did he say anything once we first dated that guy back up? He did. Fit goes into death kills, right? What does? Does Fit go into uh, death checks? Yes. What else? Uh, hard to kill. Okay. That's it. That's what I know of. So then subdue and high pain threshold is only for subduing. Uh, fit also goes into subdue checks. Okay. Well, at least we don't have to worry about this. Yeah. It's hard to subdue me. I might die. But I think I'm just gonna put your some grenades your, to have on hand. Just I've got three on hard to kill. Try to match it. Two on very fit. I've got twelve <laughs> health checks on the seventeen. But a minus ten, I mean, I'm not gonna make that. See, I got a seventeen also. But my heart, my like, my subdue is like, or I guess would it be stunned or conscious check? Is that subdue, right? Yeah, that's conscious check. That's minus twenty. I mean, I got a twenty on that. Okay, I got a sixteen. Just one works. Where are you guys looking? So your death checks and your subdue checks all go off of health. Okay. If you have fit or very fit, it adds two or one to it. And then if you have hard to kill, each rank gives you a, another one. So my hard to kill is 12, 14, I'm a 17 on my death checks, and I'm a 16 on my subdual checks. I could probably buy, buy up my hard to kill. Two more rings. Um, you can see large segments of off in that particular direction. 
a turn in corner. A large section of the corner is now missing. There was flashes of red light, and you can see moonlight coming in through the second story, even though you're on the first floor, coming off that area. It seems as though some sort of large channel just ripped through part of the British Museum. Um, that's what you can tell. Um, you hear things falling down from the second story. You hear um, structural beams starting to collapse in that region. The museum's large enough where you think you're safe in wherever you are, but whatever's happening, it's uh, pretty bad over there. I'll type on my ring that Hunter teleported a tooth to you guys, and we teleported it. Some sort of perhaps trap went off on the teleportation. I'll go find Hunter. Uh, at this point, you two are in the room. Um, can see segments of wall literally disappearing. Um, it seems as though they're just being ripped apart, and they peel upwards, and as they peel, they disappear into nothingness. Uh, you can see what seems to be the horrific sight of a naked man, half-skinned, uh, missing eyelid, uh, no hair, um, like some sort fright of like check. some sort of object from a like a event horizon. You guys gave me fright checks in the room. Fright check. You got it. Do I even need to make it? Yeah, no, you still because you can still fail. Still minuses. Pass by ten. All right, goodbye. You're a bit stunned. You kind of trip backwards. Um, you're a little bit incoherent, but you can hear what he says is. He's missing possibly this section of his lips uh, and then the side wall, and you hear, Get out of here! Oh my gosh, let's get out of here. Uh, <laughs> so, wait a second, uh, can we kick the door open? Can they hear the voice? Does the, no, voice just like you know? the, the door is the still there farther on up. Well, the thing we is, the if you want to go through that hole that the wall is, you're heading towards this dude. Uh, you can identify him now as Hunter, but I mean, you've never seen this before. You can make it to the door. Um, uh, Elisa Portu is just wide-eyed. She's completely just disconnected. Frank Thomas grab her. Uh, Frank Thomas grab her. She's just kind of staring there in a, into oblivion itself. Um, do I just take a shot and put you on your misery? No, you will shoot for a bit. Maybe. He's suffering. We have to kill him. <laughs> He's missing an island. I'll figure out if I can come and get you. I'm going to figure out if I can come and get you. <laughs> Thomas probably unloads. Uh, what is there? He, he'll dick around at the door. He'll grab it. He'll push it in. He starts getting the hell out of there. <laughs> so he goes through the door. Thomas does. He's willing to trigger it. Uh, you can give me a fold space. Spell. That's by four. It's starting to build. Um, it'll buy you some time, but okay. keep doing it, I guess. All right, you can give me another roll. Mind you, this is not the best condition. If you didn't have high pain threshold, you wouldn't be able to do this. Uh, but this is definitely not the best condition to do this in. Yep, I understand. But you work with what you got. So no, I'm not talking about the skin, but I'm talking about the. No, I understand. You work with what you got. Though. Yeah. So success by nine. You're able to stabilize the effect to a certain extent. Uh, you can stop anything um, roughly around you. You have a fear that anything coming into physical contact with you uh, may disappear. Um, however, you are bleeding out and the blood is going somewhere you don't know. It's going to the multiverses. Wherever. Well, it doesn't cross, you don't think it crosses dimensions. It's just being broken apart across the large area. So, Otherwise, it's fairly quiet yeah, from you guys. Right. Eventually, these guys run back down the hall and get in contact with you. Yeah. I like being able to I feel like I can leave the signal. I'm going to try to step off the signal. Before you even step off of it, you have a good feeling that without some sort of an anchor point, you're at a severe disadvantage. If I survive this, I'm going to have nightmares. <laughs> you're going to what? I'm going to have nightmares. I'll try to render first aid of myself. There's things I can see that are bleeding. I mean, I'm not opposed to just... Uh, I'm in a chemical lab, right? Is there a Bunsen burner? Anything you ultimately come into contact with doesn't stay very long and ultimately just okay. smears across space. Do I have to touch him to bind wounds? <laughs> not really. It makes it a lot easier. Can I do it from a distance? I sit still and try to grab Potentially. But you're not there right now. Just trying to get back there. I'm heading down the hallway still. Which way? Away Wait. from the way he told me to run. Run, told... you fools! I'm like, okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> kind of seven it, huh? I'm like, that's Hunter. Jeez. Yeah. 
We're running. I'll follow B. Alright. So, you guys continue to move. You guys can get out to the parking lot or do what else you want to do. These guys can eventually meet up with you. Find a car. Thomas will tell you that there was a... Looks like Hunter, but he had no skin and everything around him was disintegrating. We need to get to the chantry quick. He's not going to live through that. He's so, just got to go help him, right? Look, have you ever dealt with this before? There's got to be somebody here that's dealt with a, a spell this powerful that's actually ripped the flesh off Hunter. Contact the chantry because he's going to take with him. It's going to keep expanding. We need to get to the chantry to contain this. Why the chantry? That's like half hour away. They have a bunch of, um, yeah, but we can contact them on the phone. Maybe they could do something. They could teleport. Why do we call it MI5? <laughs> what to shoot? No, you no. no. have to agree with the young. No, we can do this without MI5. This is probably going to be beyond them. If we could try to contain this with... I don't even know if they can contain this. What is it? You know? Do I know a film archery? Uh, can I do a you were talking to individual, so to get your body language, you probably would have had the thing up. Otherwise, it just looks like yeah. some guy's blood in your face. Um, pulling it down, uh, you can see black streaks all across uh, the corridor heading down. It, it's very possible that he's slowly been ripping the fabric of reality, and ultimately the last few kind of lo- the la- last few threads holding this particular piece kind of gave way to weight, and it just ripped. Physically moving him, he got out of the area. Would that help him, or is it centered on him? Uh, he essentially is the rip. Um, he would have to be um, bound some way. That's, I tell you guys. You Maybe a Hellraiser could be. You'll so be aware that there are th- certain ways to bind something like that, but you've never dealt with anything remotely like that. Right. It's the Chantry, then. Find the phone, call the Chantry. Well, they're doing all that. I keep putting uh, the hold space. I keep doing the same thing I was doing over and over again to see if I can get to the point where I can punch them. Okay. Uh, you can give me three more hold space rolls. Um, you'll also lose three points of HP. Blood loss. Unfortunately, there's nothing much you can do. I mean, you'll, yep. you can grab for something, but it just destroys. So that one's by eight. That one's by seven. And then that one's by you're holding it together for the most part but okay. as I said before you're bleeding out okay. there's no way that you can see immediately um, to stop it from happening okay. again I'm just trying to get it so I can touch things so basically I keep trying to lock it down and test it on you know some, some, a table or something you can lock it down within the, the boundaries of the sigil even probably within a few inches if you really try okay. um, on average it it kind of um, ebbs and flows a little bit, so you'll barely be able to hold on to something for maybe a few seconds before eventually it just overwhelms you and it's gone. Can I hold on to something long enough to turn on a Bunsen burner so that I've got an open flame? Potentially, yeah. Okay, I'm trying to do that, and then my intention is to start burning the parts of me that are bleeding the most. <laughs> you'll take a few more points of damage, I'd probably say two or three. Given the amount of skin loss you have, it's, it's some, you can do something. However, you get a definitive feel that a lot of times the flame isn't actually getting to you. Right. It's going somewhere. Yeah. But some of the time it is. That's why. Ultimately, you get a call. What is it? You call um, the Chantry. Um, I think I said it was a... I forgot what the cover was in London. It was a bookstore. It was a cafe. Cafe? Oh, yeah. That's right. Um, cafe. Yep. There's a situation at the British Museum of Antiquities. We have, how would you describe it? A rip in space? A rip in time space. We have, what is it called, dissonance? Uh, Hunter's in trouble, we need you down here. It's ripping up the British Museum. He'll try to get somebody on the inside of the chantry. You know there's usually a delay. I wonder 
blood and flesh isn't raining about, on Lisa Martin's? Because that's where a lot of this stuff is teleported. About five minutes she has past. Horrible psychological damage. About five minutes past, you lose another five HP at this point. I'll ask Char uh, Scarlet if there's anything I can do to help Hunter. She meows. You can give me a body la or was it body language? <laughs> See, she's kissing her ass. Seven, eleven, <laughs> <ten>. six. <laughs> um, I don't know. She might be indicating that you might be able to heal him to a limited extent. Pull out your wine flask. See if she'll touch that and say something. <laughs> Otherwise, the the chantry gets in contact with you after five minutes. Um, they tell you that they're sending somebody right away. It'll be twenty minutes or so. Um, they have a site set up near Stonehenge. Uh, actually, they're inside of London, so they British Museum. They tell you how, they do ask. It does sound like you are uh, rushed on the other side, and probably people are mildly yelling. They ask you how much of an emergency it is. Big. All right. All right. They said they'll try to send somebody quicker than that. Okay. Uh, you can you stay on the phone. Want to signal work for something for you? Uh, he'll get you in contact. Probably another minute passes. You lose a point of HP. Put in. Is there something I can do to help? Yeah. Maybe we can combine uh, the powers of the healing. Uh, uh, I look down to Scarlet and I'm like, I'm going to need your help on this one to get to Hunter. Who just seems to look up at you from the carrying cozy. What are you doing? I'm going to try to heal him by saying the, um, the chant out loud. After that minute passes, you do get a word over the phone that that would help greatly. Apparently there's some sort of mass, massive spatial distortion in that region <laughs> and they can't t teleport immediately near it without some other point. There is one point that they can detect, but it seems to be the center of whatever the hell's going down down there. All right, we'll take a signal. Do you have a signal? Yeah. You would be mildly aware that there are occasionally, I suppose, pings coming into your area, and they get scattered. Uh, you get a strong feeling that if somebody tries to teleport anywhere directly yeah. near here, that's not terribly good. It's going uh, poorly <laughs> It's going to be like, well, get out of the 80 mile an hour car and start running with the road. Right. Or a Run like deuce and a half. Set it up in an alley. Okay. Think that's good? Let me do it. I'll stay on the phone. You guys, speed is what? Five? Eight. I'll grab it and run. Speed is 7.5. Basic move is 7. Okay. So you're unencumbered right now? Yeah. And I have running. All right, then the professor will quickly outpace you. And you're like, you're good. Yeah, I'll stay on the phone, man. All right, you can get there in about another minute, but you You're guys can do something in that time period. I'll sit there with Scarlet and I'll try to focus and say the the chant of Mind Wounds. Okay. And try to see if it gets to Hunter. Scarlet, Scarlet seems to be acting slightly differently. She does seem to be directly in front of you as you're walking down the corridor. Okay. Last the lady to close her eyes. Take off the ring, please. She doesn't seem to be remote. She's looking off the British Museum. Eyes. You can just take the ring take off her. Ring off her. I she has checked out. She, she is on vacation. I, <laughs> I, I open her mouth and I examine her teeth. Looking in, she doesn't have it. Uh, she has a, um, what have you, uh, a metal cavity in the back. Yeah. Otherwise, she doesn't seem to have any fake teeth that you can tell. Close her mouth up so she's not sitting there and I can open them up in the I'll take a swig of the wine of Bast before I go any further. And then I'll start chanting. <laughs> I'll tell Scar this is probably as close as we can get without being too terribly dangerous. And right, you'll get a plus two. Right. Uh, you can't see well at this point. How you can vaguely tell that there's some sort of stable area heading towards you. A kind okay. of a mild jog. Okay. Um, you're trying to hold everything in. Yep. You're not trying to sense anything out by beyond you. You get my six. It's pretty difficult at a range. Um, you can't get more than probably about six feet or Scarlet will move forward any farther and you get a just a bad feeling about moving past her okay. or even moving too far to each of the sides. I'll just try to stay right beside Scarlet and keep on. Okay. Uh, otherwise, uh, what's happening? You can give me three more rolls. 
you'll end up losing uh, four more HP, but before you make any death checks or anything, let's see what his roll is. Be down one by five. Okay. So that's your first one, right? Yep. Seven. Eight. Beat it by eight. Second one. Nine. Beat it by six on my third. You're getting fairly faint. You can disregard that four points of damage. It seems as though initially you're. Uh, you could tell that you're bleeding out, but for whatever reason now you seem to be more alert. I mean. You have a feeling that you, you can't fix him the way that he is, but you seem to be at least compensating for the blood loss. Okay. Then I'll try to keep it up as long as I can until someone... Yep. That's the rolls were for. Um, ultimately, uh, the Chantry, along with four people, can put people in that block and run back. Uh, it probably takes them probably about two minutes to get near the epicenter, so... You can make your roll. I've got one uh, death check now. Okay. Oh, no? I'm at number four now. Okay. Is that... With or without that four? Um, with, without the four. Without four? Then you can give me the depth check. Because as, as soon as you get to the number, then it's triggers, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, what I was saying before is you were losing the HP while he was doing this, so you would have never, you would have been losing one, then got back one, one, and then got right. back one, so you never would have lost four in total. Right. So my death check's 56. I would have been at 60 without the four he saved, so I'm still at 56. Okay, then you make it. At five times negative, there's game over. There's no death right. check at this This is point. times four. Um, I'm going to succeed by... Eight. Under normal circumstances, you might be able to walk off a gunshot wound with that, but under these circumstances, not really. Um, so, ultimately, a team does um, arrive by the time this happens. Um, it seems as though they're able to stabilize the effect to a certain amount um, and get close enough, and they actually start binding you with something. You just start losing a sense of um, your sense space around you as it starts to happen. Okay. Um, and it does seem as though they're lightly healing you as the process is happening. But as they kind of mummify you up to a certain extent, you just black out. You can't. Okay. You're aware that your sense space is still running. You just can't see anything past these bandages. Yep. Okay. Slip-ons. Slip-ons, buddy. Yeah, what's happening to your slip-ons? You can hear them kind of talking in a muffled tone. Um, Part of your ears missing on one side. Uh, they tell you that they're bringing you back to the chantry. They can't teleport you in this condition, uh, so they're waiting for a vehicle. Everything's gonna be all right. <laughs> I sit on my back for it. <laughs> I let people carry me. Otherwise, it's you guys right now. Probably about another five minutes. Um... Clyde. For what? Clyde. It was a fact. Could have been the security guard somehow. You did some stuff with his hands. The Order, the Order of Hermes will tell you it seems to be some sort of paradox backlash. Uh, they will ask you if he's done any kind of, uh, I suppose, uh, blatant misuses of magical powers. Within uh, what realm? A year? Six months? Three months? Two months? One month? Very small, he says generally fought, what is it, very small effects bleed off after about a week or two. Uh, so he says like any kind of major events uh, within one, was it, they probably say within the last four or five months. No, not four or five months. The last two months or so. Yeah. He teleported water from the ocean to put on a fire. They don't know if that caused it specifically. I mean, not to this extent. Yes, so. Um, they ask you about background, like what else? Did you see him do anything else weird? Or did he blatantly skip, like, rituals and a spell? Are you pretty badass with that? He frequently teleports with all symbols on each other. Alright, they ask you specifically about the history. You mentioned the boat and things of that nature. They believe that while successful, he's been slowly, um, I suppose, wearing in the fabric of reality around him, and he hasn't... He always hasn't, takes time. It seems as though he's gotten to a point where he's accumulating faster than he's burning off. There's, there's a drain in the boat, and the boat is pumping out water, and there's a foothole in the front. Our adventures have been occurring closer and closer together, so that hasn't been available. But don't you think it was a trap? <laughs> they, all he did was teleport too. 
they say that uh, it only every time that something like that has happened without the prop, they'll as you'll know with thaumatology and with thaumatology, when you skip spell rituals, there's a a safe way of doing things. It's kind of like well, I'm gonna lift this giant fridge with my back, just my back, really quick in a shaking <laughs> sideways motion. That's what Hunter's been doing. I'm gonna twist. And one of these, yeah, and twist at a violent angle. And eventually, over time, you're like, and there's a disc! I don't know how that happened. But ultimately, the rituals, the elaborate um, uh, conditions, hand gestures, incantations, are all there to slowly cause the effect to come into place. And while he seems to be pretty badass by cutting corners, he's like, I can totally lift this fridge! Yeah! <laughs> yup, and they believe that, unfortunately, he's gotten to a point where he's good enough not to, not to majorly mess up. So it doesn't trigger. So it just it just builds up. But you roll good. <laughs> Eventually, it's all going to come to head. They say you can succeed and still by shortcutting things. You teleported a tooth. What's that for? It was a poison tooth. We couldn't develop it for the guy. He became conscious. He was becoming conscious. <laughs> yeah. It seemed like he woke up when he was like, yeah, and then there. So the guard. Is the guard around? Unconscious? Yeah. Uh, for the most part, they'll start to help some of the people here. Uh, they're not. They can't account for two of the guards uh, in the museum. Can they collect that tooth um, to further study it? See what's in it? They'll have to find where it is right now. I'll let them know the guard that... You'll tell them that it was on top of the sigil stone where they picked him up. They don't see it anywhere. I'll let them know that that guard I point to my chest. Hunter's chest. And they then... say that something has damaged your life force. It's not pattern damage, but um, some sort of incantation or spell or even some sort of creature uh, had... Uh, directly damaged the essence that keeps your body alive and your cells. So, in the area, they need to be repaired because your skin, muscle tissue is just going to start to slack off and fall off. Nice. <laughs> it's essentially dead. <laughs> like, a like, a like a dry game green. Is it like one of the spells inside the book? Yeah. yeah. There was a lot of On the Sierra, things Sarah. like rack, um, harm spells, things that attack life force. Major, uh, so they're all going to need help. Yeah. It seems like um, the Captain Avery's leg isn't asleep. Uh, the cells are dead in it. They're dead to me. And they're bringing him essentially back. Uh, they believe they can heal the, um, the, um, the chest. The chest. The damage he took from uh, the chest prior and the damage to Avery. It'll just take longer than normal. Um, ultimately, the cells are, to quote Princess Bride, uh, mostly dead. <laughs> mostly. Either that or it's going to be Jack Avery. Avery Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hook you up on those suspenders. Um, so they can still be revived in time. They'll even tell you that the, what you were doing was slowly repairing it. Um, they hadn't degraded to a point where the cells themselves just started to break down and your immune system started to eat them up. Um, but for Hunter's case, they're going to... They risk coming into contact with them, so they're going to... Uh, Try to treat him by alchemically treating the bandages that are uh, spatially locked around him. Okay. We might need to call in my five to see if we can figure out an ex explanation to the general public why the British Museum is only sure, it was a gas leak. I smell partially gas there. <laughs> Did she smoke ass? Or do you guys have a public relations firm that comes and deals with situations like this? For the Not record, specifically, they're very low key. We'll call it my five. We'll get it set up. They already have a they already have a task force dispatched out to us. They can take her out to a safe house. They haven't checked her. Uh, they haven't cleared her for going inside the chamber. Right. I think we're getting MI5 involved at this point. Our team has been ripped asunder. All right. It's only Hunter. Yeah. Oh, I apologize. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm still a watch. You're still walking with it. Good. Maybe in a casualty. It's a scratch, right? It is. So it's growing back slowly, a point every 10 minutes. All right. So are we thinking that his thing was completely on to him? Like, he blew himself up, and it just happened to be... I'm not convinced That's what the it, Chantry but... seems to suggest, but that might not be correct. It may have just triggered one... We might need to send MI5 to go help find Michael Winthrop, based upon the address that yep. I gave us. There you go. We got a picture of him. 
So we're still missing two waxworks villains. It's all right. Well, no, one of them probably burned up. You're pretty sure until the Hun burned the hell up. Uh, the executioner. The French executioner took a rocket to the head, but it seemed to be meandering around. Uh, you are missing your. There should Jack be a the one-armed Jack the Ripper that is unaccounted for. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> That's not bad. No. Because he can only slash with one hand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he wasn't left-handed, and we shot off his knife hand, so... Let's see, I'm back here. He'll be at minus something. So it'll take probably about 30 minutes for MI5 to ultimately come in, cordon off the British Museum area. Um, not 100% our fault. Most the individuals, put it in the individuals coming here don't seem to really care. care about you specifically. It seems as though they've been told from high up that this is where they're corner office area. They don't really care what you're doing here specifically. <laughs> that remind me of uh, that kid from Indiana Jones. Like, no, 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 you told me to go over here. Well, I step where you step, Indy. I step where you step. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what else were you guys doing? What time of the night is it? Uh, probably now 7.38. Shit, only 30 minutes went by on this one? Great. Should we go we to this guy's to... house and confront him? Without Hunter? I just yep. need to heal up a little bit. No, you guys went to, um, the Chantry and back, so it's probably around, like, uh, 9 o'clock. Okay, how is, uh, Althea Montrose doing? Um, she's doing fairly well. Uh, they're still sticking to the original schedule. They feel confident that they can wake her up prior to that. But yeah. we're, we're just check I checked the lady here as well. What kind of protection does the wine of bass entail? Uh, from them, they'll tell you that it ultimately seals in one's person. Um, you could exist in um, environments that you'd normally not be able to, but to a, a minor extent. Um, possibly several atmospheres of um, uh, pressure. Um, maybe vacuum, um, high heat, low heat, but nothing like the the surface of uh, mercury. What about the time displacement that Hunter was going through? Not really, no. I'll warn them to check the lady's mouth that they have at the, near the chantry. I'll see if she has a fake tooth with goat poison in it or something. Yeah, they gotta check it before they get clear. <laughs> oh yeah, I give that to them. I go, here's the book. Here's some goat poison. Here's a magic pouch that has a bunch of ritualistic things. Let's put them in out. What about the little statue? I don't have that. I don't have that. You guys dumped the cabinet. No, no, no. It's not on this card. I don't have it. The thing I touched the cat to. Oh, that's there. There's a tiki doll. Yeah, a tiki doll. Yeah. So you don't have that little thing? Huh? You don't have that No, I don't have that. Hunter has all that. Hunter has that entire content of the curio pack. But it's all gone now. Some skin and equipment gone, right? No. No swords? Oh, no. So I give them all the uh, all that stuff until I get back. Is that uranium motion? Yeah, but it's still freaking limited. So, well, they even broke it a few weeks ago. True. How long will it take for me to gain nine hit points back? Ninety minutes, roughly. From there, about ninety minutes. Yeah. Right. Um, could we uh, have dinner here? At the Chandry? Yeah. We can have something. Uh, we can probably find something outside yes. like the cafeteria area. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Otherwise, Hunter is stable. They're very surprised. He's still conscious. You can talk to him if you wish. Well, what happened? I asked. Yeah. Six zero one. Yeah. Paradox built up. So it wasn't a trap. I don't believe so. Really? Yeah. You, you should listen to people in Chandler. You know what they're talking about. They weren't there. They will tell you on the upside that the pretty much vast majority of it has been burnt away. Uh, <laughs> so all you gotta do is be bound by magical wraps and Otherwise, uh, from museum. your from your records, it seems as though you were taught uh, a right to be able to tell how much you have. And they'll give you certain levels and um, significant meaning to those where it starts to get dangerous to this point. They'll tell you if you ever accumulate uh, more than five, it starts to become dangerous rather than minor, minorly inconvenient. And it's uh, downright... Uh, uh, horrific if it ever gets above 10. 
Okay. They said that you're probably hitting around eight with your last. <laughs> uh, looks like it was fairly slow. Maybe one there, two there over the last month or two. This is accumulate. Oh, what? Does it accumulate with how well he does at his skill? Or does it accumulate according to how many people see things going on? He takes a. There's certain regions, uh, like in Pop London, is not as bad as some other places, but populated areas you're aware have a, a stronger spiritual barrier and the um, laws of physics are a little bit stronger there, as opposed to the middle of like a castle in the middle of a forest. Um, and you do know, on the opposite, there are some places like the, the near dimension that have very, very loose physics associated with it, allowing certain creatures that should normally exist to work and live. That's ultimately why dragons don't exist anymore here. Um, so depending on where he does it can have an effect on it. Um, if the better he succeeds, it's a little bit confusing the fact that if he succeeds better, you just see a lot less paradox. aftermath of it. You don't see less paradox. It's just you don't notice it because he compensates for the fact that he's like, I don't need any kind of thing here. I'm just going to teleport and I'm in a room. I don't. I didn't set up sigil. I didn't set up another sigil. I didn't look where I was going. It just happened. And if you're very accomplished, you can do that even with the penalty. Um, but paradox still is cute because you cut corners. There are some places where corners don't matter, but Earth is one of those places where. So they simply think that he was. He was building up more than one per week over the last several months doing things. From the report you gave, moving a boat, uh, crashing in the roof of an emporium, those are probably the main ones. Um, but under normal circumstances, if he had more time, like a, say three weeks in between to bleed it off, this might have not happened. Can he be healed in the next... A few hours, or is he? Uh... He's going to be conscious, and they believe he's going to be stable. They can't. It's not a good idea for them to try to magically fix this. Um, they are using small amounts of alchemy, but it's kind of seeping in, and they, of course, have bindings to keep them from casting or using any kind of magical ability or any effect that he's currently has on him right now. But they would assume that he might be in here for close to about a few weeks to a month. But they believe that he should have all functionality of his limbs and everything else. He hasn't taken pattern damage. The tissue just isn't there. Okay. Sounds like you're going to be on uh, disability leave. Yep. We're going to pursue a few ends, and then we'll come back and let you know what we're going to do. Okay. Okay. I asked Quentin, what is it going to take for you to help us out? Quentin just kind of looks at you. What are you all for dinner? What's the menu? Ah, uh, it's a chantry. Quentin could, will select something. A series of things. Um, relatively inconsequential. You guys make a fair amount. I'll grab something for Scarlet for helping out, and then we'll head up to the Winthrop's. Winthrop's. All right. Do you have much Paradox built up as far as you know? Do you play with this Paradox stuff? As bad as I know of. I get all my... You've been a silent guy. You're not building up Paradox on it. Sorry, you burn it off. <laughs> Boom! I let you know that I get most of my powers from Vast or from magical devices, which kind of limits... All right. From what I understand, know, Paradox, so... I don't do anything with Paradox, as far as I know, so... All right. Off we are to win for us. What is in Paradox? So can be an urban survival or streetwise? I put wood in and a scarf and sunglasses as we're incognito. Beat streetwise by 11. <laughs> if you wanted to take control of Croc or uh, Thomas during the time being. Sorry. Uh, I want uh, Jack. <laughs> it's like a cripple hierarchy. It's a cripple You're gonna hierarchy. upgrade your cripple. Exactly Treat like you with no magic. <laughs> Jack is Steve's previous legs. character that lost his legs. Poor black um, I failed urban survival with an 18. <laughs> but not on the cripple legs. <laughs> oh, wow. 11. 11. 
um, ultimately B memorized the map and uh, there was an object obscuring the north point so she's like no you follow this road heading east to west and then she seems to be a little bit stressed and ultimately you convince her that she's in fact going the wrong direction down an east west road and she doesn't take it very well but concedes the point I don't concede the point until I'm actually at Windrup's place. I'm like, I guess you were right. <laughs> <laughs> or better yet, she might say, I guess you weren't wrong. <laughs> I give it to you once we're there, but not yeah. before. It does seem to be uh, the address that was provided to you. Um, there isn't There's a name that you can see. Put on my monocle to see if there's any signatures on the inside. From the road... Um, can't see too much. Uh, there is a gate that is currently closed that blocks the driveway out. Uh, now, I told you guys that if we did any magic that whoever was doing this stuff could detect that. I have no magic as far as I know other than the items I have. Not casting spells. Is there a wall around the place or is it just a gate on the road? I'll lock pick the there's gate. A there's a wall, but it's more for aesthetic value. Like two feet uh, high, no, I'd probably say it's like six feet, but the thing is somebody could grab on the top and with help get over it. I'll it's use the adamantine dagger and cut the freaking chain or try to jimmy the lock. Right? Um, it's not so much jimmy in the lock, you kind of get I'm it in there and the twist thing. it and yeah. then just push the gate open. So much... You know what? Adamantine knives are so much more effective than popping locks and using a lock pick. No, because like shimmy and shimmy out. <laughs> Do you have dogs in there? I don't care. I'll kill them. Are we going in? Guns of Blazing? Bass dogs. Got her Bass tube, dogs. living room, then we shock it up. <laughs> All right. Is there any lights on in the house? We're all here. Uh, upper right section. Um, you're not sure what it is. Uh, looking in, you can see that there is a bookcase in there. Might be a study. Could be a bedroom with a bookcase. Touch your teleport to Sarah. I'll look around. Oh, <laughs> Get close. Just put on my monocle to make sure if there's any traps around. Should we walk up and start driving up so they don't hear a car? Nothing that I can tell. All right. We have a taxi. <laughs> I don't think we actually have a car. So. We're walking. Now, taxi dropped us off and drove away. Yeah. Sneak up, or just walk up, it's night time, so. Close the gate behind us, drape the chain over it like it's still so off. Alright. I have my rig on out. For most part, you guys don't see anyone pop up in the uh, window. You guys can make it to the building. Two story. Uh, you had some faint impressions of there being a storm cellar off on the right side of the building. I'll use my monocle. We'll do the perimeter check first. Goggles as well. They're magic. Search check. By four. On the front door, there's a light, there's a spot that is near the top of the door, and it's obscured, almost like it's on the other side of the door. As you get closer, it starts to get a little bit brighter. Got the door. Keep on searching around. You find a similar kind of bright spot on the windows in the storm cellar. You don't see anything of that nature near the second floor windows. Uh, there's a balcony overlooking the woods in the back. Do we see? Put on my miracle ear. Is there any sound of movement in there? It's hard to tell. You can definitively hear the forested area around you. There's wildlife, crickets. Can you, can you use the, the outer wells? I think that just tells us any kind of shallows or weak points between boundaries of reality. I have an alt. This place is rigged probably with the same sigil that Scott was on the door. Yeah. The only way is up. Second floor? 
Yes. Or we just get rid of the walls. Got her tube shocking off. Or I just disintegrate. No, magic detected. Get through the whole house. We, we can start a fire. I'm just shoot the door. <laughs> I like fire. Fire's Here's the problem with Hallow Fire and Shock and Awe is <laughs> Boss Element of Surprise. This guy's some sort of. Yeah, I know. I'm mage. But, but let's say he's a, he's a higher mage. He probably saw us walking up. At nighttime, if he has the same thing that, let's say, Frock has, where he can see life essence and whatever. What's the point of nighttime to him? Nothing. It's not like he's always looking out his window. Uh, if I was a bad mage, I'd be paranoid. His his his, his emporium was already waxed out. He knows that we were close to Merryweather. He knows that the British Museum. show up on these A fair amount of them have. It looks like they're muted because you're looking at something through wood. Yep. It's definitely on the interior. Um, how Actually, about the windows? Is there anything on the windows? Not on the second floor, from I can tell. Actually, do you have a heating torch? A what? A heating torch. I've got a flame torch. All I gotta do is heat my branding iron that has absolutely no spell casting. All I gotta do is just brand the house. You gotta sink it in the right amount or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Or I can just carve it into the house. Uh, why don't we just get up to the second level? Make a human three and help each other out. All right. Well, if, we, check. if we can get That's a rope up there, we can climb up there. I'll just climb up and drop a rope down. How about that? Sure. Okay. You'll have to scale the rope. Pass by. <laughs> I hate to remind players at this point in time, but some of you do have luck from uh, this adventure yeah. that I forgot about. I'm just making you aware. Well, we have luck for this adventure? Yeah, plus, plus luck. luck. Climb by eight. The balcony. You can easily get to the second store balcony. Uh, there's some relief molds kind of near uh, where the balcony is, and you can just kind of hand climb them. And I'm going to go for a window that's not. It's a. Uh, it's two glass. It's two glass doors that are at the top of the balcony. Okay. We should all be on the balcony. Oh, okay. I throw a rope down and. I'm in a motion for him to go first with his monocle. monocle. He's got a monocle. He's got um. Oh, I suppose that it's fixed now. You can see that it is uh, a monocle, but it's also clipped kind of to permanent alligator clips, and you always kind of see a big battery in his front pocket. <laughs> <laughs> we but are weird. Compared looking. to the other weirdos in the group. The only thing weird about me is that I have a cat and a papoose. I wear regular clothes. <laughs> You're always followed by a tall uh, black man, black man in alligator clothes. Oh, well. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't help him. But other than that, it's all normal. The so I'm gonna ask normal. you if you see anything on those doors. You guys give me simple prime checks. Uh, what about rope up? I don't need another one, do I? Need no. four. These are guys are just coming up on the rope. By four. It's underneath the computer. <laughs> Failed by five, but I am climbing the roll. Can't they help me? I'm skinny. <laughs> so I did fail by five. So you slipped down, and that would just pull you I don't know, it's going to help me the roll. So do you make my jump? Four. Four. Um, do we do climbing? I have rope climbing. Rope up climbing. So you can use that. Okay. What does that give you? You're going to be screwed if you have to it's do a rope climbing down. It's a technique you don't have to use your feet to climb. <laughs> it's the same thing. You can simply climb with your hands. Have you ever seen, like, you, yep. not a universal soldier, but soldier with Kurt Russell? Oh, yeah, just <laughs> climbs the hell up there. High five, then. On my rope up climb five. So, yeah, everyone kind of climbs up really quick, and you're I'm jelly surprised. I'm Everyone's kind of up there. Like, you know, I always kind of get up gym. and then you pull yourself up. You're kind of skinny and uh, not terribly strong. And you slip down a little bit and burns your hands. And ultimately, they're like, no, 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 just make a little loop at the bottom and tie it off. And then you put your foot in it and everyone just kind of heaves you up. Right. <laughs> you made a little bit more noise than you're comfortable with. Hopefully, there's no lights on in this region. So. Yep. Well, I, get my I chose the region because there wasn't that. So. Okay, examine the doors with our goggles. Yep. See if they're specked out. This is going to be really weird if this guy got kids in Hawaii. Not really. Yeah, if he's not there and we're like, tell us where he is. And the kids are like, yeah. 
There's a cupboard in the far corner of the room when you look through your goggles that is emanating light. It seems to be kind of a foot locker. No, it's kind of like an old kind of pirate chest farther um, near one of the cabinet trees, and you can see light coming through the cracks of it, but when you take out the goggles, there's nothing there. I warn you guys, there's something in the chest. All right. Open up the door. I'll have everybody step to the left or to the right, just in case it happens. Yeah. And then I'll take the brunt of it. Well, just is, because uh, I can take Thomas, the door. seems to be locked. Is Thomas in front well, with us? guess or what? Got a bedtime dagger. I'll say they're at the Chantry <laughs> with uh, <laughs> Hunter then. I shove it in your brain, at a bedtime dagger. Yeah. <laughs> I use my Tremere knife. Is there anything Adamantite Dagger can't do? No. No. I use my Adamantite, Jimmy the Lock. It's almost like a credit card. (laughs) Yeah, ultimately a small latch that is on the second floor glass door balcony. You're just like, yeah, there we go. And then you shimmy your way out. Um, Door opens. Go in. You can definitively hear that there is someone in the building, probably on the second story. Um... Doesn't sound like they're coming closer to you, but occasionally hear like a, a book ruffle or something like that. I'll go. It's pretty quiet. Still, still um, the lights are on. You guys can give me an architecture. All the lights are on? Yeah. Well, the second story lights. Oh, I don't have architecture. Can I go uh, out of hypnosis? Yeah. All the lights inside the house are on? Upstairs. No, just there's a light on in the second story near the front of the house. You guys are near the back of the house. Uh, and you're not sure what that room is, but that light was on, and that's where the noise is coming still. from. Okay. Did it by three? I thought the lights were on. Architecture by five, and I will be trying to stealth as well. My uh, auto hypnosis by three. Okay. You can get a plus two on your will, will saves for stealth. This is two. Uh, yeah, all I'm rolling high, I got stealth seven to shadow stealth. for some disadvantage. Oh. You shadow. Uh, I'm not sure what the default is. It might be minus four off. Okay. Off of your shadowing. I got a cloak um, that you can wear. It makes you invisible. That'll when work. you guys are aware, this is a, an older English uh, <laughs> kind of two-story building. Um, you can be fairly stealthy. Given the size of the group, though, you think it might be inevitable by the time you reach the staircase or interior to the building that someone's going to step on a loose, like a board that's going to be like... Then this way, all run in. <laughs> Shock and awe! Yeah. <laughs> Truth grenade this bitch up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm gonna try to attempt to light walk as we walk through here. Yeah, there you go. Is that a skill? Is that a skill or a spell? It is skill. a skill. Really? Yeah. Yep. Light walk. Yep. I've never heard it's of it. Walk, four. It's yeah, walking very in sense. a specific manner where you're not putting much pressure on each individual like, foot. Uh, and you leave and less. Stuff. Yeah, like monks. Or like trying to go over like a pit. Yeah, there you go. Or B. So. Dex adventure. <laughs> is it right. Dex or is it something it's else? It's Dex. Great. <laughs> I'm gonna ask Scarlet, is this chest trapped? She doesn't seem to indicate anything. Yeah. She doesn't know. Yeah. I know. Why do we wait on the chest to let you die? Let's go and tell her. If we're all gonna die, he's gonna die. Alright, fine. We'll go find him. So, who are our stealthiest people? Apparently not send, me. Kind of send like one or two people forward, and the rest should kind of hang back, and then they'll join. I'm a pretty good stealth right? Alright. Oh, yeah. So I'm yeah. in stealth, which is like yeah. a rolling high. Me too. Oh, I suck at stealth. You do? <laughs> yes. You got that one. Does that add on to stealth? Gives you plus two to stealth. Alright. Okay. I'm <laughs> average then. You know, hang back. And <laughs> I'll go. go. So. From the beginning to join. Oh, if it wasn't for the damn pin. Closest for the horse, I went to the that year in college. <laughs> yeah, it happens. 13, 12. Uh, I'm thinking that Puddin has like, such epic powers that it's going to take a longer time to unlock. Yeah. Beat by three. She's like a super uh, cat. Right. For the most part, you guys seem to come in. Um, if somebody were on alert, you feel as though somebody might notice that there might be a draft. There's a little bit of noise coming from outside because the door were open. The doors were open for a small amount of time. Uh, you're moving through and you're trying to be fairly quiet, but as I'm stealthy, I'll put on the mail earlier, see if I can hear them. You definitely can hear your the problems that you're having right now. Is the boards are a little bit old. Froggy um, potato chips. <laughs> no, he's not here right now. It does seem like that individual is still in that one study room. Well, Ultimately, there'll be a wax thing in there turning the door to this. Yeah. Back and forth. <laughs> like, this gotcha. seems to be a master bedroom. 
There's a door leading out to a main hallway, which you can see light coming down, and there seems to be two doors immediately next to you. There is a staircase heading down to the first floor, and there's also that light coming from a room where there's another door open near the front of the house. Use my monocle to see if I see the essence signatures. Can you give me a perception check? Five. Um, as you get into the hallway, there's a faint light coming from the uh, that front room that has the light on. Um, it's a little bit unusual because normally you can't see through multiple layers of wood. What's the first door I see? As I there's a door immediately off to your right. Is it ajar? No, it's closed. So is the other one across from you. Then there's a staircase, there's another room, uh, what is it, then you head up towards that one room, and then there's two more doors from there, but you're blatantly passing by the, uh, the, the Is the there any shadows underneath the door as I look underneath the door? Because I'm sure there's, this is an old From this building, or from the door immediately adjacent to you? Yeah. Not really, it doesn't seem like there's any light on in there. Um, there might be a tiny bit coming through. Uh, maybe a window in there. Do they Pretty have? Hard to tell. Does it have? Um, does it have a? I'm sure these houses have uh, the locks still. Each room is locked. Skeleton lock. The skeleton yeah. lock. Maybe. I look in through the, the skeleton people and see if there's anybody in there. Pretty dark. Uh, you do have a little bit of night vision. Kind of looks like a fairly large bathroom. Okay. Keep on going. Um, you can either. Just, Surprise! Me and I are just waiting. You can either go up towards where the staircase starts to head down near that room and the two doors up there, or there's another door over here. With the light on? Uh, no light. So you're here. Yep. The study room um, that had the bookcase in is up here. Uh, there's a large bathroom here. There's another door over here. There is a staircase, and there's another door and another door over here. I tell everybody to be quiet, and I try to listen with a miracle here to get a better... Um, it seems as though somebody is going through um, books fairly casually. Can you tell which direction? Which direction? Probably in the back. Very okay. confident it's in that okay. lit room. I'll tell you. We're going up. <laughs> Start making my way. All right. Every every step, I'll take a look at the sigil or the monocle to make sure there's no sigil going to trip. Doesn't seem like there's anything interior. Um, but as you start to get a little bit closer up to that next room, um. If the individual has really good hearing, it's very likely he might have heard you already, but so far there's no rustling coming from that room or anything that you're aware of. Um, what the hell have you? Um, so the only thing you really notice is that when you get closer, that um, light in there um, is a little bit brighter coming through the wall. But that might be because you're getting closer. Or because there's a candle to check magical objects. It's building up as a fact. Fireball! Get closer. I'm getting onto the other side. Uh, for the most part, you can see that there is a fairly bright light, um, kind of at knee height, into the room. Um, you'll be able to see that there is a little bit of light coming out from, uh, not physical light, but there's, there's also physical light, but there's a light coming out from the room. Um, as you start to go into that particular direction, you get an immediate sense of danger. Okay, I start making my way back down the stair. You can give me a dodge roll. You have to move forward and then dodge down. Okay. What does um, word of non-detection do? Five. It makes it more difficult for you to be uh, detected uh, through certain means, like magically. Uh, normally you guys don't have those on because it also inhibits <laughs> your ability to teleport. Because um, if, you if you don't know what the hell you're moving, be by one. Uh, all right. Ultimately, you end up getting towards the staircase and heading down. Um, you end up taking 12 points of damage to the upper right shoulder. Um, it, it just goes completely damage. numb. 
Um, from what you see, B, is before he even actually gets into the threshold, what seems to be a very fairly fast moving, you know, we'll say like 30, 40 miles per hour ball, probably about yay big, just moves straight through the wall and seems to clip him in the shoulder as he attempts to make it for the um, staircase. And ultimately, he stumbles down and he starts to make it down the staircase at this point. Bad guys in there, people. Fuck it. I I'm start charging. I start yelling out the jinx. Because it's going to be coming. Is uh, the door open? The I door's always been him. open. Yeah. No. All right. The door the I don't need to see him. I just need to... Yeah, you remember that's where that light's coming from down the corridor? Yeah. No. You don't have line of sight to him, but you could, you've been able to hear whoever's been in there for some time now. Rockets bounce, right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right, so we'll go based on uh, base speed here. We're at Professor first. Really? For the most part, uh, you didn't see what B saw. You just saw uh, Jeb run and then like twist weirdly and then kind of slump down the stairs a little bit. Uh, does that um, does Black Tom work against magic that well? It only stops physical objects. So not none of that shit that just hit him. From what they were describing, you don't know what hit him, but from the effect prior, it's unlikely that would stop it. Uh, counter magics might work, or uh, counter magic. I don't have like. Is it magic? Same. You have thaumatology. I do have thaumatology, but what is that going to do for me? You understand that it could theoretically be countered. Countered with what? Uh, rituals. If you either knew that particular ritual, something very close to it, or knew counter rituals in general to make it more difficult. I'm going to have to learn those later. Okay, I... Uh... Cautiously going where I see. Um, you'll have to, you'd have to run if you want to get up there. You guys were near the uh, so master bedroom run. door, and then run. Jeb went ahead of you guys. I know I don't plan to play out the combat without interacting with the bad guy. So yes, I do plan to run up okay, there, I'm although I go run. last. I'm All right, so you run up, you ultimately see this individual. Uh, he seems to be stepping out from his desk. What is it called when you, um, like... Does he look like my picture as well, just like curiosity? Yeah, the Winthrop individual. Okay. Evil bastard. He looks like a nice old grandpa. No, evil Why has he got a CPAC freaking ribbon on him? Really wasn't he? evil. CPAC evil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Might as well be wearing 666. <laughs> He's a leader in his community. Yeah. He just has other is, hobbies. Okay, so if I run up there, is there any way to, where to take cover? From what you're aware of, yeah, you're behind the solid wall right now. Behind the solid wall? Yeah. Um, can I do the Abaddon? You could, yeah. All right, then I'll do the Abaddon. Uh, so, you can give me a Dex Base Occult. Yeah. Dex Base Occult. What is that? Isn't it like what a 16? Is yeah. You've seen that she has a, a weird crooked wand oh, that shoots okay. webbing at people. Okay, I thought she was in like some kind of move. No, the... she she twirls the wand and then like Spider-Man, she's like, I'm a job! Right. And things she get all sticky. Do I know if, know if I switch forms, sure does like my damage cheese. transfer over to that form? What do you mean your damage? Everything your damage does, in that form would be form, higher. Okay. Because the uh, form would be much stronger. Dex of and you'd also have claws. You said? But you wouldn't have advancing dagger. Would be the same as my no, but I got claws. There you go. I got four claws. Yeah, it, it is quite literally by, like being like mauled by a large panther. No, but I'm saying just, I mean, the, the injury to my nine. left transfers over to. Okay. Yeah. Made, by, made by nine. Okay. You can't use your it seems you get him square in the upper Sometimes. chest. Gets onto his mouth, <laughs> and he seems to kind of stumble back and fall onto his desk as he's slowly kind of pushing the stuff off. Well, let's hope he's not like supernaturally strong. I was just kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, making me feel better. You're next. Yeah. Well, I would like to just run up there and shoot him. You run up with your current movement. Move. Yep. Uh, your encumbrance. I didn't see anyone Eight. else. There's like a, a Move, invisible. Five. No, you didn't see anyone else. But I don't have the. I couldn't figure out how to make it so I wasn't carrying that big ass gun. Gotcha. It'd probably be seven then. Yeah. 
can get up there. Uh, oh, wait. But I changed <coughs> that. Is that... Is that so should be it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Right. So you can get up there and get a shot. You'll take a, a bulk penalty on the weapon. A what? Bulk penalty, penalty on the weapon. weapon. Minus well, two. I've had it out. Is that... But it's you because you're running. Yeah. You're taking oh. a full run to get up there, and then like swinging it and firing that immediate second. You can stop and aim if you want to. But you don't fire the shot. No, no. I just want to shoot him. Roll. Okay. What am I rolling? Just gun. Gun pistol minus two. Gun pistol minus two. Okay. Go through the dice. And we're gonna throw a lock in. Oh my! It's <laughs> gonna all. Out. Gave the one more. Wow. Yeah, and so too good. that gave me a. Uh, okay, so that's giving me an eight. So pass by with a minus two. That's giving me a pass by seven. Or seven. Seven. It seems like he's not aware of your attack. Roll for damage. Yeah. What if this isn't the bad guy? Oh, and it is. Really? Is the rocket gun Do you think he was just holding the magical magical guys, ball of energy that's just going to... But what if he's invisible in yeah, the room plus, plus. and I don't see him? Because I don't have so, a goggle on him. Five dice. Five dice. For, for damage. Anything that penetrates, yeah. Probably find out yeah. and start taking damage to the hit location. Yeah. <laughs> that hurts really, really <laughs> bad. <laughs> he's going to take double. Oh my god. It's a lot Four sixes. Six. Six. Holy <laughs> shit. Um, 26 <laughs> PI++. Plus plus. Ultimately, it seems to hit... Uh, Seems to be invisible force. Drawing, drawing. Pops him in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Almost max damage. Yes, four sixes. It's cool. Uh, it seems to hit him in the upper chest, then blows out the back, blows through the side, um, uh, the window and the window frame, and then somewhere out into the English countryside. Oh my gosh! I hope it doesn't like <laughs> an old lady's cottage. Oh look, we just got your house back to normal. Why is Red you? Make my way back up. All right. So the individual seems to stop struggling at this point and starts <laughs> to lay down. You can see blood just kind of pooling beneath him. At a fairly rapid rate. <laughs> like probably about this much. <laughs> and then we get up to him and we're like, Are you the bad guy? <laughs> <laughs> Are you Michael Winthrop? <laughs> Don't think it's torture you more than that. <laughs> his face is kinda of clogged up in like webbing and other things of that nature. And his hands are kind of slowly trying to move this material. Out of the way, and they're just blood is pooling out fairly rapidly underneath his body. Yep. Uh, jeez. Well, your shoulder's dead, so that's all right. We're out of combat right now. It doesn't look like. Is it, are we gonna save him? Put on my oh. monocle. All right. Check the room. Uh, for the most part, it seems like uh, he <laughs> is. Curious. From your perception, you can see that he seems to be fairly bright, uh, more so than the rest of you here. Um, similar to like what the cats are looking at, but most of it's centered up in his upper body. But the light is immediately pouring onto the floor. <laughs> no. Otherwise, no. You wouldn't say that there's Success. nothing really. Uh, can you guys see uh, unseen things with the monocle, like ghosts? Sometimes I look around. You don't see anything unusual here. <coughs> I'm sure he ingested the milk of the goat. Oh, and that's what's coming. Oh, look at the webby. Don't touch him. <laughs> no. If I see that he's breaking through with his hands, I'm just going to break his hands. With one hand. I think he's kind of stopped struggling. Uh, I don't think we're saving him. I'm no, not, I'm not. I, I feel not bad. It's not saving him. <laughs> it was the guy in the picture, right? Yeah. Most of you that saw him. He was covered in webs so when I came up here. <laughs> <laughs> when he stops and, that, and all that life force seems to leak out. Before it leaks out at this point in time as you guys continue to talk, um, you come to the realization that at some point while you were talking over the last few seconds, the edges of the blood pool are moving back in. No. That's sad. <laughs> <laughs> you shooting the, the, uh, the blood or him or? Both. <laughs> blood first, him. The webbing is highly flammable. The Don't whole shoot thing. the webbing. No. It's all over. It's, it's a all meter over diameter. It. Let it burn. Let it burn. You can get like the foot and the ankle, maybe. Awesome. You won't have a foot and ankle. All right. <laughs> I, I'm just going to open up with the rocket pistol on his head. Just, bam. All right. For the most part, there doesn't seem much of any kind of light on the um, on the um, on the legs. What's strange is while you cut in with the beam on his feet, they just melt away like some sort of strange wax, and the clothing starts to ignite. 
However, one in the head, and there seems to be a, uh, a rocket round kind of penetrates, possibly got into the first, uh, got a, probably got onto the desk, Other flails brains. about, you guys take cover as it flails about the room. I wouldn't say it hits anyone, hits the bookcase and just kind of smolders off in that far oh, corner. But all have... the light's gone. However, the head didn't seem to be made of wax. Brains? Brains. Shoot the head? Yeah, I shot him in the face. Like face. He's laying on the ground, he's like, Poosh. But what, the old man put his essence into the... It's hard to tell, you're looking at blood, wax... We'll try to get the light <laughs> back on. The light never went oh, off. You what the hell's in that chest then? His other body? The light's leaking out of oh. Chicago. I'll check the, uh, is the bookcase <coughs> bright? Uh, for the most part, nothing really. Um, going through it, there do seem to be, uh, some unusual, um, books. But it would take a while to go through the full catalog. Um, a word of unseen, what can that do for me as far as, like, on, um, like, invisible hotline? Um, it'll detect any kind of spiritual presence. If the creature is part spiritual, like a Garu or even a deep one, and oh, not a deep one, like a Garu might show up in one of the other wells, it'll be able to help you detect shallows, like oh, dimensional yes. rips between realities. But not um, if he's just invisible. Yeah. No. If he's a ghost and he's partly spirit, then yes. Well, I do have my amulet of unseen lord on, but in case you want to choke me. Does this guy stop leaking? Sucking blood back in. Oh, yeah. so it's, it's very quickly like evaporating, and that's normal. Okay. It's just, it, it, he looks to be dead. Check the other rooms. Unless he's faking it. Faking I want to check the other rooms that light. Alright, check the other rooms. I'm going to take the time to put the two rockets, reload my gun. Yep. I'll go check the other rooms. Going around, uh, for the most part, it looks like your kind of standard affair. Uh, you would imagine that this individual has a... If anyone came and broke down the house, nobody would really notice. Um, there might be hidden things here, or secret compartments, or anything else. But on the on the surface, it looks like he's just an old man that runs a wax emporium. Um, is his head still attached? I would I would say his neck and lower jaw are still attached there. What does his head look like? It's hard. God. You saw him prior to that, and it looks like the photograph. After that, it's just a mess. It's a mess. Looks like a guy that got shot in the head with a high power pistol. Right. <laughs> like a gyro rocket. Well, like, if his head was still intact, I want to put it in, like, a pillowcase so he doesn't try to regenerate, but I'll know it's really good shit. Fairly confident, unless can't something... Regenerate. His head has a hole through it. What are you trying to figure out? He That's might like be. a rule, right? No, Shoot the brains. I just wanted to uh, take his head and keep it trying to regenerate. <laughs> you can get, you like, want me to destroy his head? You can get, can. like, a canning jar or something and put brain <laughs> material in it. Skull. Huh? Yeah, I, I feel like once the brains are destroyed, it's, it's just over. That's a rule. Otherwise, what's the PC's up to? Fairly quiet English night. Search the book he was looking at. Yeah. Okay. See if it's anything like how to summon your. For the most part, it looks like insurance uh, reports regarding uh, the Emporium, <laughs> standard business affair, <laughs> things of that nature. It's only been here. It's only been five hours. <laughs> <laughs> your place burned down. Oh, good. I had a big insurance policy. <laughs> Is there a journal? You guys, I'll say you spend probably the remainder of the night. Searching. That's searching fair. through the building. Oh, what about the There's... chest? Do we open the chest? Sure, be no, been there seems to be one. strange wax, uh, wooden, um, uh, almost wooden uh, mannequin type parts, um, strange rubber tubing and other th equipment like that. Some of it looks a little bit borderline Gravenhurst. Other stuff looks a lot like some of the material in the Emporium. Um, yeah, checking the body later on, it looks like most of him is um, some sort of magical alchemical prosthesis. Replacing bad parts with wax and um, other things of that nature. It looked like his upper chest, brain, face, and everything else was still intact. What was uh, this guy's name? Was. Michael Winthrop. And then what about the other guy? What about the other guy? What other guy? <laughs> what other guy? There was uh, an accountant that handled uh, some of the other bookings that Adair Merriweather worked with. And then there's been various interns that have worked for the Emporium in the past. I think this guy's been doing it for a long time. And Michael Roanoke? Yep. Hunter Avenged. That's the accountant. Shot him in the face. Otherwise, looking through the materials, um, you find contact information from a lot of uh, individuals. Um, some of it, you imagine, is probably connected to some of his contacts. Um, if he had other people helping him with this or wherever the bodies came from. The only problem you see is all of his legitimate contacts are mixed in with these other ones. 
he's very brief notes. He must have had a good memory. And just like A. Larson, yada, yada. And just card catalogs of phone numbers and other things of that nature. Um, ba, 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 ba. Except for any secret you, rooms here, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, in the basement, ultimately, you'll come across and inside the chest um, that there are um, a fair amount of what you'd say is um, uh, a type of uh, wax tass uh, that contains um, a type of life force resonance quintessence. Um, it does seem like there is an alchemy lab at the basement, and there are um, several occult, occult tomes. Um, nothing you would say is as powerful as the Sierra Altera, but there's a lot of alchemical, um, what is it, documentation, notes, other things of that nature. Theoretically, somebody with uh, enough alchemy could replicate doing things like uh, recreating organs out of wax. I'll take alchemy. that book. I have alchemy in my You start packing all this shit up in boxes and pages, yeah. getting it by the fun entry way. I'm call a moving company. How are you guys attacked with that spell then by that um, security guard if this guy is the one that knows that spell? I don't know. How many of you know Trans Lewis? Uh, two. <laughs> two and the third one that died? You don't know. You don't know specifically. Oh. However, you'd imagine that the same cult might have similar procedures. But if that guy was brainwashed, I'm wondering if they could have, like, implanted a spell in him to go It's on. hard to tell I'm gonna have at to this research. point. I'm going to have to research. There's not... <laughs> uh, you have to get some really Does hardcore anybody, CSI to reconstruct his face. Can anybody commune with dead? That is From. a spell... You know that Michael Larson knows how to do that. Uh, one of the directors at the um, Wudu Hermes. I think Frank can, too. Frank can uh, attempt to contact the spirits. I think. Just, just to know, I took the book about regenerating that stuff. There's probably close to about 45 pounds worth of tomes and notes. A lot of it is kind of dabbling. Other things are more research notes. And it seems like the culmination of probably about 45 to 60 years worth of work, which seems a bit odd because it all seems to be in the same handwriting and is not completely appropriate with his age unless he started doing this at five. I'm going to go check his kitchen to see if what kind of food is in there, if he even ate. It seems like he has uh, things like oatmeal, uh, paste, other things <laughs> of that nature. Like what you would feed someone um, that had major digestive um, issues. Major digestive surgery recently. So was, yeah. But no, the, the, the cupboards are pretty dry. You'll see like canned peaches and other things of that nature. But there's a level of dust on here that indicates that they've been sitting there for some time and are mostly for appearance. Yes. Um, can I take photos then? You can take photos. I'd buy my wounds to start those healing. Okay. Do you want to check out the cellar? Already did. That's where, that's where most of the... Cool. You guys so search for secret there. compartments. You spent probably the next 8 to 12 hours searching the um, premises. And like I said, everything was hidden pretty well. If somebody did a pretty... Was it a, a small search of the area? Nothing unusual. It would be an old man by himself, kind of lonely. Um, but no, there was an alchemy lab underneath the, the facility. And I would probably say that there is... Maybe about 250 maybe $300 worth of um, um, certain alchemical equipment. And you imagine that the um, amount of wax, I'd probably say about 14 wax tasks, is probably quite a bit more valuable than the equipment. Pack it all up. I will say, though, a lot of this alchemical, a good chunk of this alchemical Cheryl research does require... A good chunk of the alchemical um, projects and notes here do require very specific types of tasks and resonance, which you would have to learn how to recreate. There's some here, as I said, the wax tasks. How big are these cubes? Um, each cube, I'll probably say, is a, like a half the size of a bar of soap. Okay, I will... No, no, I would say that they're actually probably big bricks. Oh, yay big. Um, can we... They're lightweight, Did but I'd probably we... say about yay big. So if I just open up my bag and just shove it in there... You'd have to unfurl yeah, the cloth yeah. that you have. Yeah. Okay. Did we check the body for any markings? Okay. Or see if there's any markings there. on the body? Do we really want to touch the body? If she's willing to. Yeah. He's willing to. I got there. gloves on. Okay. Go ahead. I'll watch. I got a dead arm. That was a blast everything. <laughs> a dead arm, it. Actually, I'll be like, see you. Start healing yourself. <laughs> already started. I want to check the body. I want to see if there's anything on him. You're watching. Um, otherwise, you can give me a perception check. No, for the most part, it doesn't seem like he has much on him. Um, 
By ten. It does look like uh, his far limbs are like wax, as I said, and there's kind of a, a wooden uh, mannequin skeletal frame underneath that. Uh, he does have a phone here, and theoretically, uh, a nearby operator might have like recent calls and things of that nature. I think that. Call that lady, and she'll be like, um, someone was calling from Mr. Winthrop, and I'll do it. I'm just saying. I'll call the local operator, and I'll try to pull them aside and say, have there any fast talk, whatever, say, have any calls been outgoing or incoming to this phone number? Yeah, give me a fast talk. Well, first of all, she'll tell you that uh, it's not, she can't just tell you that information. Um, tell her I'm an investigator, and I'm at a crime scene. Um, I right, give her that, will, that will allow you to get a fast talk. Eleven. Ten. Six. Um, what is it? You would say that she gives you a list over the course of the next twenty minutes, probably about. 40 different numbers, 15 of which are called frequently. Okay. Does she know who the numbers belong to? Does she have a reverse directory where she's at? She can place them inside of London. Um, one of them's a, a pub. Um, Okay. She'll give you a, a list of the rough areas, if not the specific building. Okay. None of them are to anyone's particular residency. Okay. Sinclair's pub? Yeah. No, not to Sinclair's pub. Okay. Make note of the numbers. Otherwise, always your press after check by. By 10. By 10? You would know. I can talk to you over here really quick. Okay. You guys having fun? I think we've gotten a, too big of an occult group. We didn't catch them in the final act, so it's just not going to happen. How about you all? You satisfied with your blowing yourself off? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. It's an actual digital space, I can't tell. I think your deal with pudding is. Very one second. He's had his cap for a long time. He jumped whole hand on, whole wolf of feed in on bass. Yeah. Yeah. And you have I've been uh, doing stuff for bass, for bass nights on the side, but uh, I haven't taken pudding on adventures because I was afraid to get like hit with a giant rocket. Right. Something like that, but now that I know that they actually aren't there during danger, I'm going to take them more often. I would let you know that she's as shiny as his cat, so she has potential. She's shinier than any of us. So there's something to put. <laughs> it better be. It's like, oh, it's just a normal cat. It could be, but it's not. But it will not go back if I don't have All right. I also took a photo of his um, decimated waxwork slash real head body, and I wrote down how much I didn't find. All right. It, it, it's not necessarily a sign of like wrongdoing. You just have some elderly man's head blown apart. Well, I mean that's for our. We'll put it on our cell for your records. <laughs> okay. 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 I got it. It's like a cocoon, <coughs> you know, like he's wax work. And I've also taken pictures of people that have, have like hung themselves God. and stuff. If we ever get busted by the capture, I'll go on all for freaking life. <laughs> 25 to life. It, it goes to the Abdurro group. Make sure you get a picture of me if I put on his chest and my gyrock gun. <laughs> I got a picture of Frank on that saber tooth tiger. Oh my God. <laughs> but no one was smiling. <laughs> um, are we just gonna abandon this place? And you want to destroy it? Burn it? 
I can just disintegrate it. Well, right now, his minions, minions don't know that he's out of action. Fine, we'll just send him a note in the mail saying, hey, we're coming for you. We Love can you. mail I mean, them. We can mail his minions can... his body. <laughs> Cats, we don't know who they are. <laughs> well, we have an idea. We can wait here for the phone to ring. Well, probably Michael Rono. What? Rono, he's probably one of them. Ooh. The account. Okay. Because there had to be, what, seven or eight people to do the spell? Okay, seven or eight people to do the spell. Seventeen. Seventeen. <laughs> well, there's fifteen. One's down. There's a bunch of interns. Clyde yeah. is down. And does it have to be people? Can it Clyde be uh, sentient beings like last oh. word people? The core uh, ritualists, you feel that at least the majority of them would have to be re people? Maybe you could actually do it with some advanced simulacrums. The interns and... Let's not burn the place up as far as the corpse. But the it's about, it's wax, it will melt. Like, stake it out and wait for the cultists? Or the... No, that's our job. It's we can just job. tell MI5 to stick like around and see if stuff. anybody comes to the house. Well, MI5 has then have the operator put me in contact with MI5. Or not even MI5. We can have... I guess no, the Chantry's kind of busy. And I five it. We've got another location, we've got a cultist, and uh, he's half small crown. Give him the phone numbers of the, the phone numbers he's been There you go, here's the phone numbers for his contacts. Okay. Didn't anyone look in that chest? Yeah, we found a small crown wax guy in there. Um, with Hunter going inside the Chantry, how does that work with his bleeding off of this paradox within an extra dimensional space? Ultimately, he's bound up, and they were a little bit worried about um, they were a little bit worried about teleporting him. It's actually dangerous to put him inside of a chantry, but it's more dangerous to keep him anywhere outside. Um, technically, what they'll tell you is they put him in an area, um, essentially it demands a type of. Um, room that is sitting halfway between this reality and the near Umbra. What? what I'm have... looking at it. Can I fit one of my relay things in this room? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see where they brought him. Uh, um, is it... and halfway uh, between is not through. Yeah. Uh, preferably somewhere outside. So have to talk to How would he burn off his paradox? Technically speaking, you have a few of those devices in cold storage with wires cut. Um, would he... How would he be in, like, say, in Swartalheim? Um, they could probably use more elaborate magics to bring him uh, um, back into action quicker there. Um, but there would be the risk of transporting him there. Paradox is already burned off. Yeah. Well, but it's still burned off. Yeah. And the only reason they haven't started to repair the damage quicker is just because he's he's toxic to handle at the moment. Set him up to lie. Alright, have we finished our adventure as much as we want to do here? Yeah. We, we... MI5 can get you the numbers for the various individuals. Okay. Um, most of them seem to be public places, um, but they can give you the times that the phone calls were made from the, the operators. Were any of these names on that list of the black We're going to have to go there and investigate and show pictures, I think. Yeah. A lot of them these are at public venues. We'll spend a month trailing it down. What the heck? Well, fast track. We'll fast track it. Okay. Tried to kill her once. And even though you've already killed her, just go with you guys too, right? The idea is they want to fast track a little bit of investigation work with my five. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Over the next two weeks. The next day, as soon as she Althea Matros. Oh, she seems to get back up. She tells you her suspicions. She didn't know. Uh, she. Had a feeling that um, Adam Merriweather was connected because he seemed to know far too much. She didn't realize that he was a cultist, but unless they killed him off or he's secretly still alive or something weird he like that, he probably could secretly still be alive if they put like something like his heart in a waxwork and then just staged his death. I don't no, know. I didn't sad. check. His Adam Merriweather is not dead. Sure. dead. Um, however, she'll say that over the last, like when she actually started finding some of the clues. She started um, 
I suppose, getting uh, rapidly paranoid. She didn't know at the time. She just thought she was onto some sort of elaborate conspiracy. And then just her heart rate got to a certain point. She couldn't sleep and she couldn't think of anything else. And then she went to go lay down. And that's, she doesn't remember anything past that. Do you remember if you were drinking anything? Um, it will take her some time to um, talk about it, but you guys can go over psychology. Um, she's pretty sure that she was having a pretty stressful time. And an individual... Do you want the psychology role? Uh, it takes about a day or two. Um, she's not sure. She had a cup of coffee. Um, however, the coffee tasted weird. There was a thick cream in it. She didn't put two and two together until you tell her just now. Who brought her a cup of coffee or offered it to her? Um, she... It was free coffee around. She had gotten the cup because um, she was pretty stressed. But there were several people. She'll name half of the um, curators. Uh, Jeffrey, Davey, uh, Jeffrey Davies, Emma Davies, Richard Evans, uh, Malcolm Harold, Marion Arnsworth, uh, and then um, Dennis Clyde were all in the, the nearby area. Yes. So any one of them all of that them. we've talked to. All of them are cultist. Um, Why is a night watchman hanging out with a bunch of curators? That's a, that's a, that's. I know, but it's below they, their they station. They must be good because we um, did psychology and detect lies on them. We're talking to some of them. And M, if you guys fast track it, yeah, yeah we, we watch it. And my five picks up a lot of the individuals, so you can get some names. Um, it takes a while, but ultimately, it does seem as though um, people believe a Marion Arnsworth. She was the um, director of education and outreach. Uh, was higher up the chain. They don't know if she was at the top specifically. The only other person that might have known from what they know was a, um, what the hell is his name? Uh, Gregory Winthrop. He was like number two. So uh, several people get picked up. Uh, Marion's Arnthrop is just MIA by the time the investigation kind of comes to a hold. Do we even hear about that person? There was a list of curators were all given to you at the start. At the start? Yep. There was. And you guys started asking about the immediate individuals, and I gave you various names and other things like that. We went with the um, underlings. We didn't get close to the big pigs until next I don't think you asked any questions specifically about her. You were asking about the who made the thing. I think we were going after the ones that uh, Adair Merriweather tipped us off to. Adair Merriweather wasn't on the... the he didn't suspect yeah, he didn't uh, have Arnsworth at Um He's trying to find out more information. However, Omar Bahoudin can confirm that whatever event was happening there is no longer happening. Um, there's MI5 is still on the lookout for, um, they'll find out that um, uh, Marines, uh, who is it? Marion Arnsworth um, is MIA. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. So is uh, Sandra Clyde, Dennis Clyde's wife. During MI5's interrogation, um, we'll ask if I... Malcolm Harold will be gone as well. Right. How long has this... Has the cult has been under, hmm? underground like this at the museum? They imagine for close to about six to seven years they've been waiting for some event to take place. Um, a lot of them have been working with other individuals. Um, one of the uh, side effects of small doses of um, black of the... What is it? Uh, milk of the... Black goat is uh, it's kind of a supreme confidence. You're always kind of level-headed. Uh, oh. You don't really seem to be affected by anything, really. If somebody's like, "Where's the thing? Who are? Where are they?" It just doesn't register with them. They know, but you can't really. They're all tweaked out, but you can't see the effects of the drug. Yeah. So it's it just other stuff. Work on that. It might not. It might interfere with it. Meaning. They would be able to lie. Other people would start to freak out. However, depending on their ability to um, act, it might be apparent, like in, say, uh, Dennis Clyde's event, like that one guard over there seems to be perfectly fucking fine. Everyone else is, like, covering their eyes and freaking out. And he's like, oh, uh, my eyes. Uh, otherwise, they believe they've rooted out close to about 95% of this particular cult. They definitely don't have the... Resources to continue this again. Yeah. Uh, we're going to keep an eye on Stonehenge. <laughs> you need to figure out something about this little guy. Pull out the tiki doll. Um, 
Am I five? Doesn't know too much nope, other than it is. I'll do that at the tantrum. What right. about the? Um... Uh, it's a spiritual guardian. Uh, it's usually keyed to people. Um, it's probably been trying to escape from your backpack ever since you took it from its home. Oh yeah, yeah. Came close. Um, what about the wax works that escaped or are in the museum? They haven't seen anything like that. I suppose they'll be on the lookout yes, for a one-armed. Uh, he has a spear. But in the museum, those ruins could be activated. Where the Romans? Uh, oh, they will confirm that 44 of the um, uh, Roman soldiers, mostly the stuff in storage that's ready to be packed away near one of the loading docks, uh, has markings and indications that are hidden on them, and they're only set to activate provided somebody had set them. So it's not on a day-night cycle, it's not for a specific area, it's only if somebody activates them. They should probably deactivate them, unless they want to get They've balance. confiscated all of them. <laughs> Can this be rekeyed? Tiki doll? It can be rekeyed. Um, given the circumstances, um, since the original owner is dead, it's much more easy to rekey it, but it could be. Uh, the Chantry can do that for, I want to say, probably about 1500. We'll give her the second hand uh, security guard. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that it failed its first owner. Yeah. <laughs> Well, in fairness, it doesn't look like uh, Dr. Min died at home. No. Oh, that's true. It's not so I just tell her, just like, hey, take this guy with you wherever you go. It's my buddy. Otherwise, um, Omar will tell you that there is some things that are brewing in what he would say um, the area of the, um, what is it? Don't say China. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the 1500. You want that sink into the ocean? Nope. Uh, the Mount Everest range, however, it's, I suppose, fairly prominent, and he can't really differentiate what region. He estimates it probably about three to four months from now. Does anyone have climbing ability? He would place the event slightly yeah. higher to that one of uh, New York originally. Um, <coughs> otherwise, it's, uh, you guys will have about a month, you're in recovery. I can talk to the various PCs. Um, however... Yeah, depending on what, let's, 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 I'll see what the PCs want to do. Experience points? I'll give everyone... Five seems generous. Six? Two. <laughs> I'll say four. Four? Four. Okay. I have probably the most points that I've made in the group. I have, uh, including tonight's four, I have four forty-seven. And then disadds. And that then another 50 and That depends five. on if people have their I'm goals. barely ahead of you that. because there was a couple times where you missed and that was the end session. I got those points from Dusty. Okay. It was two and two, I believe. It might have been it? two and three. Okay. I had them written down. All right, then I'm right at that. Um, I don't know if we can uh, survive climbing. I mean, we get climbing gear and then we'll... I don't know. You guys did pretty damn well on climbing. The, oh, except for yeah, yeah, B. Everyone else is Johnny on the spot yeah. there. Tarzan. Like, yeah, I'm in the second story. I remember. Do you have a climbing, like, professionally, like rock climbing? I got 446. Like he has weather tubes, stuff? which have condensed clothing in. What? Steve, I don't know about your toilet. I got 451. Right about yeah, 451. I got 447 before what he gave us. <laughs> Just come together and figure out what your point totals are, because it seems like every week this is the first thing. Inflate five points. I've got ten free points from the dwarves in there. I put my three points in the doors in that as well. Right. And you had more by how much? So I have 447 before I had the four gear, so I've got four more than the four. So what did uh, Bahadur say about that? Um, he can detect so some sort of heavy cross-bridge particle event right, taking yeah. place in the um, uh, Everest mountain range. He just can't di differentiate where it is right now. He'll get more clarity as the event comes closer. Can we ask him so he has I don't know if you did get urban. the two points from the last two sessions. He's just telling you major events. And there. he'll also say that there's 100 that events happening all across the world at any given time, but there's a threshold. Two points. Two Usually they're fairly small, and he doesn't tell you about every one of them. Mm -hmm. But when they okay. reach to a point, it's like, well, here's the um, Richter scale. Before. There's one. There's one right there. Right. Um, all the rest of them he doesn't really mention. Yeah. But there are quite a few that we've even got right I don't ever remember telling you the experience points for the last two times. How much was those dormant coins? 
uh, were about 20 gold a piece, but Casey told you that their resonance uh, made them a little bit more valuable to collectors. About how much? Uh, closer to about, I want to say, 25 to 30 per coin. So how much money did Does anybody want to go and have these with uh, So every two weeks you get the 280. Doll? The other PCs have higher because they've been with the group longer. Does anybody want to go 50-50 on the rekey of the voodoo doll for Althea Montrose? Let's go ahead. So that's uh, 500 each? 500. So we decided our point total is 451. Yeah. So how much money do we accumulate by the end of the... We just went by a month, so we just went by 2K periods. So, so you would get 5... What is it? You would get 560 because it's 280 and 280. However, the PCs actually make a fair amount of money from <laughs> looting, looting the uh, various domiciles of individuals that were yeah. evil How much and money are uh, you selling making it off. With all your patents and stuff. Did you set up with your girl During, for those? Oh, we've been um, now in months like downtime. Them? I'm going to wait till Hunter gets better. Time. I'm assuming you guys are waiting until Hunter gets better. Did you set up a contract with a girl? So the rest of you have about a month and they can talk to Hunter too that, during that time um, period. Mind you, uh. Like, it is only the next two Your weeks equipment. that you have to be physically bound. After that, like, you know, they, they recommend they some uh, sandals and robe really time for you. Yep. There's some things my company is sold. During that people, time, the, the two weeks, but really, I'm going to see if I can learn anything more from uh, Scarlet. Other than the spells. fact that I don't usually um, bother to write You down get a sense that she wants you to money. get more my practical experience of what you have right now. Yeah. You haven't gameplay. used a lot of the abilities yeah. that you've so been I'm taught not. thus far. So during that month, doing or two weeks, I'll start going, going through and doing Guardian, uh, whatever else, okay. Foxfire. I, I, so, I, I do try to provide right. you guys. We'll handle that at the start next game. Can I buy up my for your power? Stuff, for your what should I say? What is it currently right now? 12. 12? It's... When do we get bean guns? It's borderline. Let's I'm see sure what you, you do during your downtime, yeah. and yeah. so just save the points right now. Okay. So once I perfected that, then you can have a bean gun. Well, what were you doing that month? I'll find out. Yep. Yeah, it right. could be set up something um, with uh, facilitating a girl and MI5. I thought about bringing hands to mine, but that would have been with, um, gear. Now, yeah, Potentially, yeah. Right. MI5 seems to have, to have pretty time. good gear. Right. Um, I think if we... I would say it's only recently that B started producing certain things that might be beyond the standard equipment that MI5 has, um, and that's because of uh, contacts, uh, some of the technology and the information you've learned watching these devices be put together. So Your uh, development budgets are kind of low. Most of it went into the uh, no. reactor, but um, James okay, Eiffel will tell you that that'll pay for itself over the years. Okay. This is just rapid. It's a long range project. I understand. Um, I'm going to try to make more. Um, can I have the yeah. Oh, yeah. High powered rockets with the EM tips, but they do extra damage. That That's better. really easy to do. And I'm going to try to perfect my beam gun so it doesn't break on the 15. Okay. And I'm going to try to work on my power cells. Yeah. So that's well, I mean, power that cells for ray guns. What, the airport with me? <laughs> um, what you decided on before was uh, you're developing the batteries and you're using the black box one you have right now. Yeah. Um, and you don't have anything that matches that quite yet. There are similar things that you could possibly even obtain from uh, Dr. Mechlot that are very close. Okay. Um, I would say eerily close in technology. Uh, to right. this battery that had plasma burns that you got from, uh, uh, what the hell is it, I want to say Peanut? Yeah. Another dimension? Yep. It might have been prior to that. I do have the broken one that I can take apart to figure out how it works. So that's how you had set up the prototypes for your first development yeah. of the um, batteries. Yeah. So, theoretically, you could get access to more of the advanced ones, but um, you know, it'd be some time. You'll have to do some research and other things. Yep, that's so all I asked. Some rolls later on. How much do you think could I get for renting out the, like, Acclimate? knowledge stuff. Renting out? Like, here, I'll let you obtain all this knowledge, but give it back. Given from what you've seen of the PCs, you're not sure if people would bring the equipment back? <laughs> Spill tone, gone. Skip town. If you want to learn about alchemy, hang around with me. I've got alchemy and I'll teach it to you. Uh, you do know that, um, what is it, Frock actually knows decent alchemy, too. How does magic work for, like, I just want, like, a 
some way to defend myself with magic or like blow stuff up with magic. Um, nobody knows. I nobody knows. knows. Well, no. Um, the PCs have various um, individuals that were willing to teach them certain yeah. information. Um, yep. I would try to learn something like dispel. None of us have dispel. Some of the PCs are aware of individuals that can teach magic. Like the Chantry seems to be kind of your old school Merlin type establishment. It's the only um, uh, it's the only organization still intact from the medieval period regarding kind of um, I suppose kind of more like your European magic. All right. Otherwise, I'll wrap the recording there.